All right. Hell yeah. How's everybody doing tonight? We're gonna start making some adjustments. Um, make sure everything looks and sounds good. Like I can already tell that my face is kind of obscured by the uh, <laughs> by the boom arm of this uh, web. I mean, of this microphone. But we'll uh, we'll have to make do. So you guys already know me, Brandon, and uh, off to my left, your right. He's leaning over me right now, looking at his laptop. Is uh, Fan Railer. How's it going, buddy? Hey. <laughs> He's knocking things over already. Yeah. I'm not even drinking yet, so that's off to a great start. Um, yeah, so we're gonna go. Might have to project your voice a little bit. Yeah. We we'll, gotta go we'll in adjust, game, right? We'll adjust things as necessary. Right. Yeah, go in game okay. and, um. Alright, so I'm gonna go back to the main menu real quick because, uh, I'm gonna take some suggestions as to what we should start with first. We have a general idea of where we want to end up later tonight, but. Definitely want to see if uh, you guys have any suggestions for what we uh, what we should start with here. Yeah, so in the next seven minutes, while we wait for everybody to filter in, just uh, give us some feedback on how everything looks, sounds, and uh, give him some suggestions on uh, what New Jersey transit service to play. There's quite a few of them we haven't even touched yet. Oh, yeah, for sure. Video and sound seem good. Thank you, Noah. Appreciate cool, it, buddy. Thanks. All right, you want to uh, filter through some of these services? Maybe uh, jog some people's memories sure. as to what's available? Okay, so uh, just going over what we got again. We got the 3800 series locals, uh, 3900 series expresses, we got 3700 series trains that come out of uh, Jersey Avenue. We got 3100 series trains that are technically they're they're put in trains from Morrisville Yard that uh, deadhead to New Brunswick, and they go into service at New Brunswick. And then you have I don't we haven't done any. Uh, deadhead moves um but i would preferably like to operate something that actually has me stopping somewhere so if you guys have any suggestions for what you want to do uh and what you want me to start off and if you want me to start off in the cab car or the locomotive uh, just give us a shout out in the chat and let us know yeah we still got a few minutes before we start we just wanted to get everything set up uh, a little bit early because it's a uh, this was a last minute thing mike just came up last night and uh he's like oh i w was thinking we could stream together i'm like i didn't even think of that great idea so it's a little bit of a scuffed setup but hey it works No suggestions yet. <laughs> we still got a yeah. We still got a few couple of people. Hit refresh on that because it still says people waiting, but we're still not seeing it. The hard text probably hasn't been set yet. You want me to just just refresh? hit the refresh? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Okay. Good. Yeah, it's only gonna go up from there. The streams have been averaging like twenty five, thirty people. Yeah. I've been doing pretty good. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah. I'm not trying to make any money off this shit. Oh, no, Just to uh, entertain everybody, you know? Hang out. All good fun. Oh, yeah. Hey, John. Doing good, man. Thank you for joining. So, uh, AJP31 has a recommendation. How about a full-length run against rush hour traffic either direction all right let's take a look to see what that entails so that'd be a 38 right uh well it could be a 38 or a 39 but he wants to go against rush hour traffic so if we're in the evening we want to go inbound 
if we're in the morning, we want to go out. Okay, now. inbound sounds good to me. Okay, so we'll start. Uh, inbound has to be new. So we do want to start out at Trenton somewhere around between the hours of 4 and 6 o'clock. What about that one? 30 at 62. 30 62. I don't recall having done that one before. Your typical, your typical local service. Um, I think I did, I did thirty nine forty three once, but it's a bit early. Uh, so we could, we could definitely do thirty eight sixty two. AJP says thirty eight sixty two is perfect, and then John is requesting heavy snow. Heavy snow. <laughs> uh, we're gonna save the snow actually for for uh, the last run of the stream because I want to go through the wheel slip control systems on the ALP46, which I haven't really seen a lot of people do yet on live streams, uh, but I also haven't watched too many live streams myself. Uh, but definitely, we will do a scenario with heavy slip and slide weather. So All right. uh, this first run, I want to keep it pretty standard. Snow for later, John. So we're, yeah, we're just going to do this uh, with my mm. typical setup sometime during the summer. Um, everything... Cloud level, we can go cloud level. I think it's like yeah, third. yeah, yeah. So it's a little bit more interesting looking. Um, yeah, you guys ready to start? We'll load it up and get going. Yeah, it'll take a couple minutes to configure the train and everything, and yeah, by then it will be four thirty. Loading in as that's that's the one thing I've always sort of been um. A little bit frustrated with TSW with is that you can't see what you're loading into in terms of like consist formation in the menu. You just sort of go in, and then when you go into the actual scenario, it's like, oh, you have ten cars uh, that weigh in this oh, much and this long. Like, like I that. wish you could see that on the menu where you're selecting from. But I mean, is there a chance that it's random? Just to it's it's not. Every service has a preset uh, consist formation. Okay. So. All right, well, let's get started. All right. We're... While Mike gets the, um, oh, just had the camera cut out. Oh, no, there we go. Okay. We're good. Oh, it was because of the loading. Yeah. Um, so, cut out again. That's weird. We'll, f we'll figure out the camera. Um, while Mike gets the train set up, Levi asks, uh, what's going on, man? How's Rhode Island? Are you guys getting any of this crazy weather tomorrow? Yeah, I had to run to work today to grab my laptop because they told us we're teleworking. So, uh, things are good. Uh, Mike and I went out this morning, uh, trackside, down in uh, Exeter, and saw, what was it, 21.52? And 21.63, uh, I think it was. Yeah, so that was good. And then we caught a couple at Wickford Junction, grabbed some food. Um, he gave me a, a lesson on steam today steam trains i didn't know shit about steam and uh he schooled me on that he's super knowledgeable about steam which i had no idea and that was a cool experience but yes we are going to be getting slammed so it was new jersey right yeah we're supposed to get uh down in my area five to eight which is by the uh mid-afternoon tomorrow so it's gonna be a fun trip back tonight Definitely got plans, though, when I get back to... I parked at Metro Park and took uh, Amtrak up here to Kingston. And, hey, uh, uh, one second. Let's just uh, check out the webcam. Let me move this above. Because I, I keep seeing it cut out. It's 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 back on... Uh, it's in and out. It's in and out, it looks like. All right, I just yeah. resorted it in the scenes okay. in OBS. We'll keep an eye on that, guys. Yeah. This is my first time using the webcam for a stream in a very long time. So, uh, yeah, as I was saying, I parked at Metro Park and took the regional up here to Kingston. So I'm going back tonight on um, on uh, 67. So I'll get back in right around like 3:30, 4 o'clock in the morning. So I'll do some uh, morning. I'll do some morning snow fanning. That'll be up on my channel probably later in the day, tomorrow. All right. So before we go anywhere, uh, I just want to go over a class two brake test. Before you do that, just pause it again. I know the fix. You got it. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I told you guys, last minute scuffed um, stream. So in the webcam settings, I remember it 
where it would freak out if I set it to 1080p. So I needed to back it off to 720p 30, and then everything was fine. Okay. That was a long time ago. So uh, <laughs> we'll see if that fixes it. Now Mike can get into his class two brake test. All right, so uh, class two brake test. Uh, I can't reach the buzzer without turning around, which is kind of annoying. So we're gonna pretend that the brake man is buzzing me. Uh, my brakes are released, so the brake man's gonna buzz one long buzz uh, to start the brake test. If the webcams cause an issue still, we'll cut it out. Yeah. And I do have it on a USB extender. Yeah. So, um, so that might cause it too. Yeah, so the brake man's gonna do a one long buzz and you're gonna apply 20 pound reduction to 90 pounds uh, the brake man is at the other end of the train he's gonna verify that uh, he has a 20 pound reduction on the other end of the train he's gonna buzz once uh, and you're gonna release he's gonna verify that the train brakes are released in the rear and then he's gonna buzz again you're gonna apply another 20 pound reduction and once that reduction is finished, he will buzz four times uh, to say that the brake test is done. All right, successful class two brake test. We'll close down and proceed. Let me just try one more thing with the webcam. If it doesn't work, we'll cut it out. All right. <laughs> but you guys got schooled on the uh, on the brake test there. I, this is just something I started learning um, recently about the whole brake test thing. All right, let's try this. If it keeps cutting out, if it cuts out again, we'll remove the webcam. I gotta get a new one. All right, take it away. All righty, doors closed. Uh set up where I want it. Alright. Please take notch a throttle. No. Yeah, it's it's not happy. I'm just gonna No? Okay. Yeah, we're just gonna cut out the source. Alright. It sucks. Um it was nice for everybody to see our faces and everything, but we're cutting out the webcam. Sorry guys. Alright, take it away. Alright. We'll figure it out some other time. All right, slack is in. I'm gonna come out on the throttle just to get uh, us up to about 10 miles an hour. And then at 10 miles an hour, I'm gonna go to coast on the throttle and we're gonna conduct a rolling brake test. So for this one, he just taught me it was, um, you take tw uh, 12 pounds? Yeah, 12 pounds uh, on the brake. So we're gonna go up, lap, take a 12 pound reduction, watch the train speed start to fall, go to hold, test hold. Hold works, release. So is that pretty normal? You get down to like yeah, about five, five miles an hour. Four, yeah. yeah. All right, NJ Rail 3862, good rolling test. Is that what they say? Um, good rolling yeah. test? Because I know Amtrak says good running brake test. Or... Yeah. As long as whoever you're talking to knows what you're talking about. Yeah. But yeah, that's how they call out on... Um, radio is if you're a New Jersey Transit, it's NJ Rail, whatever your train number is. Oh, uh, if you guys are looking at the video chat uh, and I'm replying, that's actually Brandon typing because I have it pulled up on my, yeah. on my account right now so we can have a more real-time monitoring of the live stream. Yeah, I could type on mine that's uh, logged in over there on my Surface, but he's already got the setup here, so it's all good. But yeah, Levi, they just opened up that new uh, commuter rail station in Pawtucket for uh, MBTA. Neither Mike and I have made it down there yet, but uh, from what I've seen, it looks like a beautiful station. 
sorely needed since South Alabama was still on service. that catenary height doesn't actually vary in real life. It does. It just doesn't vary at that steep of a rate. It, the change is much more gradual. So instead of over the course of, uh, I guess, one cat fold, the height goes from fold to whatever the bridge is, it might be over like two or three cat folds, so that it doesn't place too much stress in the ground. Yeah, that's what I did for Boston. So instead of placing them so you have that sudden jump, just like he said, do it over two to three folds. Alright, so for those of you who don't know, uh, C speeds on track 1 are 80 miles an hour until you get to mile post 54. So that's about a mile west of Hamilton. As you can see, we're still about one and a half miles west of Hamilton. So right here, track speed is 80 miles an hour if you are in NJT equipment. I'm just going to self govern And just keep my train speed below 80 miles an hour until we're within a mile of Hamilton. And at that point, I'm going to be to break anyway. Yeah, he's got the breaking points down pat. We, we spent, what was it, three hours one day last uh, week? Uh, yeah. I think it was like last Friday or something. Three hours just going over where to start applying the brakes, how hard to apply the brakes. So for Hamilton, my uh, usual spot is actually right here at the end of the industrial siding track. So I'm going to go to coast here. I'm not doing track speed, so I'm not going to actually apply the brakes until we get closer to this uh, overpass here. But I'm going to put the brakes in lap, and then at the overpass, I'm going to give it like 15 minutes. And right at this box, I'm going to go to full speed. When he says give it 15 pounds or take 15 pounds or whatever, what he's saying is take the normal equalizing reservoir value of 110 and subtract 15 from that. So when he took 15 pounds, he changed the equalizing reservoir to 95 and then put it into lap. Is that about where you wanted it? Yeah. I'm not really going to be going for the, the quote-unquote perfect stop. Uh, according to the game, I'm just gonna go spot wherever I think that would be a good spot. So for Hamilton and Princeton, those are both 12 car platforms. I'm only running a nine car train plus a locomotive, so I could realistically, honestly, just spot anywhere on these two platforms, and as long as my entire train is on, uh, I'll be happy. They're very long platforms, too. Yeah. The 12 cars is what, like 10,000? Not 10,000, it's gonna be 1,050 feet, I think. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty beefy. Probably lock the doors first. Not running yet? There we go. Yeah, I notice sometimes it takes a long time for this thing to pick up. Yeah, that's realistic. Uh, I've been on trains where guys will put it in the first notch, and they'll get impatient because the train doesn't start moving, and then they'll start advancing the throttle, and then all of a sudden the slack just runs in and you get slammed. Plus, they're probably slipping too. Yeah. But I find that in the game, in dry conditions, I can throw it right into max throttle, and I don't really slip. Yeah, the traction is pretty decent when the rail is dry, but as soon as you start introducing any sort of weather, like rain or snow, uh, 
best start being a little cautious. Because on the cab car, I don't know if they have it uh, worked in yet, but when you get wheel slip, you are supposed to uh, see this light illuminate. Um, I don't know if that is working right now. Um, so the only way to tell is to sort of, if you do get wheel slip, sometimes you'll see the camera sort of jerk around in the cab because uh, you're losing traction back from the locomotive and you're getting it back so the train is sort of jerking around. Um, obviously it's going to be a lot easier to tell when you're in the locomotive and you can actually see what the locomotive is doing based on, on what the uh, IDU screens are telling you. Now that wheel slip light is from the perspective of the ALP, right? Uh, yes. like this in real life. Like, there's really nothing to see out here. No, uh, I don't mean scenery-wise. I mean, oh, like train, uh, oh, like traffic Train tra Okay. Yeah, the, back, back to the timetable conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, the scenery is fun. Yeah, the scenery's great. Yeah, no, we noticed that earlier when we were doing some of the wheel slip testing that the sander light does illuminate white when you apply sand. Yeah, so the ALP does have automatic sand, uh, but you can uh, manually trigger the sand. Uh, you can also manually trigger the sand in the cab car, too. You can see there's a sanding switch uh, next to the ditch light switch here, and there's two sand settings on the cab car. There's a locomotive sand setting and a local sand setting. So basically, if you hold the switch up to uh, locomotive sand, it'll apply the sanders on the locomotive. If you pull the switch down into the local uh, uh, setting, the cab car is actually equipped with its own sander. So you would use that if you were coming into station stop like super hard and you knew that the rails were slick, you could actually hold the local sand down and the cab car would sand the rails and you would have better grip for uh, the brake. All right, clear CP Clark track one. Uh, so, all right, so the break point for Princeton, if you're doing track speed, it's going to be, there's three equipment boxes. Um, so at the second equipment box, I'm going to apply 12 to 15 pounds uh, on the break. So this is the first equipment box right here. And I can see the second equipment box coming up. So I'm going to go to put the throttle and coast, go to lap on the brakes, and take 15 pounds. So this is pretty typical of dive bombing the platform. Yeah, I mean, if I wanted to be a little bit more adventurous, I would have waited a little longer before applying the brakes, but I'm not trying to kill anybody here, so we're going to leave the brakes set just like this, because we're going to hit the platform doing about 50 miles an hour, um, and that should actually be, this should actually be good to come to a stop right towards the end. It'll fall underneath 25. I'm going to go to hold at that point. So I can graduate off. Stop. Now, I know that you explained this to me before, but what is the reason for only using hold when at or below 25 miles per hour? So the reason you use, uh, you only use EP hold under 25 miles an hour is because EP hold is an electric system overlaid on top of the pneumatic system of the brakes. So if I cut out the EP hold using the EP assist switch, if I go into hold on the brake handle, that's considered release in the brake system. 
So if you're going along and you you're doing say like a hundred miles an hour, you're coming into a station stop, and you you take a brake application, and then you go to EP hold say at like eighty miles an hour, but your electric portion of the brakes has failed in between the last time you used it and when you just used it now, all of a sudden you're doing eighty miles an hour and your brakes have released, but you're trying to stop, so you now have an undesired release situation where it, in order to recover, you may very well have to throw the brakes in emergency. So they, in order to prevent that sort of situation from ever happening, it's just in the rule book that you're not supposed to go into EP hold uh, over 25 miles an hour. Uh, you also aren't supposed to go into EP hold if you are suppressing uh, for a cab signal downgrade because again, suppression in the brake system, it's reading the brake pipe pressure. So suppression is achieved at 94 pounds or lower on most equipment. Um, if you go into EP hold while you're suppressing, your brake pipe's gonna recharge to 110 pounds, which means you're taking your brake pipe out of suppression. Uh, so you're no longer satisfying the requirements to suppress the uh, safety system. So if you did, if you were suppressing a cab signal downgrade and you went to EP hold, it would automatically send the train into a train detailed answer that I got before. Appreciate that. And then EP stands for... Electro-pneumatic. Electro-pneumatic. Whereas pneumatic by itself just means air, uh, but you add that electro to the front of it, it's implying that you have an electric system that's overlaying on top and it's doing something. So, again, e what EP hold is doing is it's, it's actuating a magnet valve uh, that is retaining the uh, brake cylinder pressure if the, uh, if the system is cut in and your brake handle isn't. So that allows the equalizing reservoir and the brake pipe to recharge while not in this. Good knowledge, guys. Soak it up. So we got a little ways until noon Brunswick. Brunswick has some touching up in the park. It's oh, literally everything. Oh, uh, we're not making North Brunswick. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's Yeah, pixelate. 
This guy's the king of manually lapped brakes. A little bit early to be talking about New Brunswick, but uh, since we're running cab car first, I am going to probably pull about halfway, half a car length off the platform. Half a car length to be in my copy of the game. How, what, what's going on? That's so funny. <laughs> Epic troll. The next station is New Brunswick. When leaving the train, please watch the gap. She's got a, she's got a very, uh, very unique inflection when she's making those announcements on the train, so. I just thought that was really funny story. Yeah. I'm still getting comments. If I don't have this, where do you get those? Uh, it's called uh, riding the train and putting your phone next to the speaker and waiting for the, the robot lady to talk. Yeah, I was thinking of doing something similar in some Boston movies, like the defect detectors and all that. The uh, MBTA doesn't have automatic announcements, I don't think, right? Yeah, they do. Well, oh, they do? Yeah. Well, maybe not automatic. I don't. I don't know if the conductor is triggered. Mm -hmm. But they do. They do have them for station. Oh, they stations. do have pre-recorded messages for station on the on the, on board the trains. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's I've almost. never really paid attention. So I, I either that or is I've the only. They've never been on whenever I've ridden the trains. I don't ride the T there very often, so I'm not. Yeah. I don't know. It's a similar sounding woman's voice, kind of robotic sounding. How oh, they are. Um, Clear Adams track one. Clear Adams. No one's asking, did they ever up the speeds on the outside tracks to 125 like they said they were? Uh, not yet. So, the whole thing about the outside tracks going to 125, um, it's one thing to upgrade track speed, you also have to certify the equipment to run at the higher speeds as well. So, the multi-levels... They want the new multi levels that are coming in. Assuming they ever figure out those multi level power car things, uh, they want to certify those for 110. Um, the current multi levels and the comments, I believe, are certified for 100. The ALP 46 and the ALP 46A are also certified for 100, even though the 46A is geared to do 125. Um, and the ALP 45s, because it's, because it is so heavy. I believe on Amtrak, those are restricted to 90 miles an hour. The dual modes can only do 90 miles an hour on it. So basically, they need new equipment. Yes, or they need to certify that equipment. So there was a point in time, I believe, that Amtrak was actually running. Uh, they, they actually sent a dual mode down to Philly, and they paired it with like an ACS and some like Amfleet coaches, and they were running tests to see if they could certify it for speed the higher speeds. I don't know if anything ever came of it because the timetable restriction still has dual modes at 90 miles an hour. So, um, yeah. Track speeds can get upgraded before they have to get equipment. Basically. Yeah, the equipment has to be upgraded as well. Or certified or whatever. It was a random drop to approach the field. Nice to see you, buddy. Thank you for joining the stream. I hope everything's good with your uh, laptop and memory. Weird. I wonder if I'm following something. Uh, you can check. Come on. Noah also brought up something to me earlier, and it's that on the uh, EDU side here, um, whenever you pass something like advanced approach, approach limited, uh, limited clear, the green on the bottom. 
bottom should be flashing, is that correct? I think you asked me that last time, and I was like, I'm not sure. Yeah, I just didn't know if you had looked anything up since. I wasn't able to actually take a look yet. Um, which aspects was he talking about that so, should be flashing? like if you, uh, down here on the ADU. Yeah, on the ADU. Uh, yeah, the yellow over green. The green is solid. Mm -hmm. So, like, when you pass this signal, displaying approach limited, that should also display... I believe that is correct. Like, it, the green should flash. So that is probably something else. They... That's an easier fix to do. Yeah. Um, it's not something I knew. It's not something well known. Yeah, so I guess they put a train in front of us at Jersey Avenue, so we're following his yellows right now. Which is alright. Um, just means I don't have to really work that hard to stop in front of me. <laughs> Where would you have put um, your brakes on at the start of county? No, um, I probably would have waited until uh, the next set of automatics, which is about half a mile from here. I would have, once I could see that in the, you know, looking out of the front window, that's when I would have probably taken 1,215 pounds. Okay. But since we're only doing like 45 now, I'm probably going to just hit the brakes at the start of the platform, unless I get an upgrade. Probably not, as you know, he's probably going to stop at Edison. Yeah, probably. Access positive stop. Because I know that Amtrak has a legit red over red aspect on their ADU. I assumed NJT would have the uh, same setup, unless ACES doesn't have the positive stop, which I am sh pretty sure that it does. Oh, apparently it's only red on top. Yeah, all these little things, um, minor details, but they're still issues, but we appreciate them. Yeah, that, that, I don't understand. What? I just got, I just got up to a clear 120, uh, 100. Yeah, that's, the signals, there's some work that needs to happen there. I think I've recorded like 30 or so signal bugs. There's more. Haven't found them all yet. Alright, yeah, this is good knowledge. I'll have to look back at this uh, live chat and um, generate some feedback to the team. Yeah, so that main issue with access, dropping randomly to 79 and just endlessly yelling at you until you cut out the system, that has been fixed in the development branch as of last week. Late last week, um, that fix got pushed. Not to public yet, but soon. TM. Check to see where this dude is. Uh, clear to Edison is he's at almost the, at Metuchen. Yeah, he's at the Lincoln Curve. Means, those Link, called the, that's the Lincoln Curves. Lincoln Curves. I should... I should maintain a clear signal at least most of the way to Edison. Let's hope. Edison's a fun stop to try to make uh, in this direction because the, the, the spot I picked is um, the overpass for Sutton Avenue, which is pretty, which is at least a pretty big landmark in the game because off to the right you'll see a big clear, off to the right you'll see a big clearing, and then 
clearing comes to a, an abrupt end where the overpass is, so I'll point that out when we get there. Let's see if I keep the clear signal past the signal automatics. Yes, I do, good. <laughs> Rumbling. Oh yeah, it shakes the house when they slam that switch. Oh, come on. Yeah, you just got that job. Is it not? It's not playing nice? No, it's playing fine. I'm just mashing the alerter. Oh, okay. Acknowledge anyway. But that, that right there, that's, um, that's, uh, Sutton Ave. That's where I would have applied the brakes. Yeah, that weird fence configuration. Yeah, I would have I would have taken a pretty hefty bite where they're probably 15 to 20 pounds. Usually, if I hit the platform at Edison doing about 50 miles an hour in this direction, I'm a happy camper. Alright, so I'm going to take a minimum set here and see what that does for me. Is it really that quick in real life? You go into service and like instantly takes off like five to seven pounds before you like. I just find myself service lap like that quick. The initial reduction. It's so fast. Um, I'm trying to remember in real life, there actually is a bit of a delay. Uh, when you go into service, there's about half a second, and then you start to hear the air pissing out of the equalized mode. So, it's not, in real life, it's not instantaneous. Right. Yeah, there's always a little bit of a delay. He, where is he? It's probably just leaving the touch in. Yep. Honestly, I might cut the cabs out and just leave them cut out coming into Metro Park because I want to make that stop hot. <laughs> That's your stop, isn't it? That is my stop. In this direction, that is my stop. Close down. Yeah, Pixelid, we're all having those issues, man, where miles out, the cabs just drop. Um, I've reported most of those progression issues, but if you have more, just keep them coming. Oh, 
we stopped at Metro Park right now. Yeah, you stopped at Metro Park. Yeah. Why am I stopping? Yeah, you shouldn't have. Yeah. Yeah. That's bullshit. If I don't get upgraded at the uh, distancing, I'm just going to cut the system up. Yeah, so how the progression should go is Menlo would be a stop. Lincoln would probably be an approach. And then these signals right here would probably be something like cab speed 80. That's just my guess. Yeah. So we're not going to get back up to track speed, I don't think, but my stopping point for is right at the end of the last curve, uh, past uh, the freight yard. These are the uh, Lincoln curves. Yeah, these are the Lincoln reverse curves. Uh, so this curve right up front here, this is 80 miles an hour. But the end of this curve is usually where I shut the throttle off. Beautiful stuff. Oh, perfect. Look at that. I even got the rear of the first car on. Exactly what I was going for. So, the front of the last car, uh -oh. actually, most of the last car's on too, actually. So, this is perfect. That's nice. Yeah. I wished that this part pisses me off so much about the game. Every time you run into scenery, it just does that. The camera? The camera, yeah. Like, yeah. That's the one thing I like about Train Sim Classic more than um, Train Sim World is the way the camera works in Train Sim Classic. It just feels like you have so much more control over what you want to do in that game. Yeah, that's true. And it has an editor. Yes. <laughs> um, all right, I'm just going to confirm that he's out of Metro Park before ignoring all of the uh, signal safety systems. He looks like he's clear of Lincoln. Well, oh, Islam, you mean Islam? I mean, not no, Lincoln, Islam, Islam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, he was clear of Islam. Yeah. I didn't see him. Me and my interlockings. I'm still learning. <laughs> <laughs> Careful. I'm learning. I'm a newbie. <laughs> not on Boston. Careful though, because I don't remember that Acela makes Metro Park. I don't want to fly into Metro Park doing 60 and easily into the station. I'll just keep an eye on that. So, Lander 484 is asking, aren't you supposed to blow the horn approaching the station? Yes, you are. Yeah, just one, one, sh yeah, one short blast. One short. One to two seconds is more than enough. Yeah. Just replace it. Double check, make sure that is cell. Uh, 
make our stop at uh, Metro Park, we will lower the game volume a little bit. Um, we're a, a little bit further from the mic than I normally would be for a, a stream or a video, so maybe that's why it's more difficult for uh, the best of us. Alright. Okay, so uh, I'm going to take a minimum reduction here. Menlo home signals, and then on the east end of Menlo, I'm going to take another uh, couple of pounds. L, corn, and uh, yeah, I'm happy with that set. Let it come down. Do a full service here. That was a great stop. Alright, so you want to fix the game volume real quick? Yeah, yeah. I'll just take a moment. Should just take a moment. There we go. Alright, let's give that a try. Hey, Crazy Dash. Thank you for joining. Nice to see you again, buddy. We're doing good. How's that? Is that volume a little bit better? Is that one of the areas where the bug kicks in? Uh, no, but it's still 30, and I don't want the system. Oh, that's right. That's been fixed, too. Union, um, track A. Was it from Union all the way to Mark? Maybe 70. Yeah, but it's 30 in the game currently, but that's been fixed. Yeah, you should get a cab speed 80 there to enforce the drop. Uh, the switch is good for 80 miles an hour. Track speed once you get onto track A is seven. Yeah, exactly. Good. And uh, Lander on Boston, you use the bell when the train is about to move, when you're approaching a platform that you're going to be stopping at, and when you're passing a stopped train or piece of equipment on an adjacent track. Um, in tunnels, too. I think the back bay tunnel, you're technically supposed to sound the bell.
so we're going to bring our train speed down to uh, 70 miles an hour. Right here. Um, so yeah, the, the, the cab signaling system is actually uh, showing the correct aspect. So that is, that was cab speed 80 back there. Or it might have been a cab speed 60, I'm not sure. Um, you said you got an advanced approach at the distant rear. Yeah, that's what the physical aspect was showing. So that should have been cap speed 80. Yeah. Cap speed. Alright, so for Rawway, if you're doing about track speed, I usually break around the tower over here. So, I think about, what was that, 19 pounds? Yeah, 19. Regional going by the house right now. Yep. Let's see what train that was. was 174 inbound to Boston. It's a fun service to run in uh, in game. All right. So you might have noticed that I'm leaving uh, at least 25 pounds in the brake cylinder when I'm stopped. Uh, I mentioned this in the route guide video, but. I'll just reiterate again, you have to have at least 25 pounds in the brake cylinder to forestall uh, the alerter safety system when you're at a, at, at a stop. Um, otherwise, if you have less than 25 pounds, the alerter will go off and then if you don't satisfy by increasing the brakes to 25 pounds in the cylinder or more, uh, the train will go into a penalty. So, Whenever you're stopped, just keep your brake cylinder pressure above 25 pounds, you'll be in a good, good place. Close down, head on to Linden. So, sometimes I have trouble when at lower speeds braking for a stop, and I notice that the brake cylinder has dropped below 25 at that point, and I have it in hold. Mm. Um, at that point, once I come to a complete stop, should I like maybe go back into service a little bit to put some more air into the brake cylinder? Yes. Okay. The, so like, yeah, so like in that situation, if you're ever graduating off and you find that you have to graduate below 25 pounds in the brake cylinder to come to the final stop, when you come to the, once your train is stopped, you immediately go back to service and you apply a full service and then watch the brake uh, cylinder pressure rise to at least 25 and then once that happens, you put the brake handle back in hold to recharge the system. That's what you do. But once you get like a really good hang of it, you'll be able to keep at least 25 in the brake cylinder to forestall those uh, alarms. Yeah. Stopped. yeah. In real life, um, 25 pounds in the brake cylinder does a little bit more in real life than it does in the game. Uh, which is why a lot of times if you're observant enough and you're at, this, at a station in New Jersey Transit and you watch trains come in, You'll hear them releasing. Um, you'll hear them releasing uh, as they come into the final stop, and once they actually, the train actually stops, you'll hear them apply a full service. So that's what that noise is when you're standing tracks. Up. Breakpoint for Linden is going to be, I believe it's this set of automatic signals um, at the end of the CSX yard. I'm going to go to post here and give myself a minimum set on the brakes. Just let them come down nice and easy. Because you want to come into Linden on track A nice and controlled because uh, it's a very short platform. So you want to give yourself enough wiggle room where you have to make adjustments to have uh, the ability to. Oh yeah, that is a pretty short. Not as short as some of the ones in um, what we were playing earlier, Harlem Line. Oh yeah. Yeah, we were on the Harlem Line earlier and 
we got some of those platforms in the Bronx that are only like two cars long. Laughable. I'm like, which two cars do you choose? <laughs> He's like, oh, usually the first two. And I'm like, okay. Depends on what's open. They were asking about um some cars that went out over the weekend. Oh, are uh, uh, the private cars? Web rail cars? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They were going up to Springfield, and the train hit a hit a truck. They had to bust a tube the train. What? What's the story behind that? I mean, that's the short version. But I mean, there's really not much more to that. The train, <laughs> the train hit, the train hit a log truck at a grade crossing somewhere in Connecticut. Um, and so they sent two coach buses out to pick up the passengers, and then I believe they were sending, like, freight engines to, like, uh, pick up the train. Shit. Yeah. Uh, some of my buddies were making fun of me. Like, oh, you're not driving 600 miles an hour down there to, to, to go film that move. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm sort of nearby. <laughs> What is, what are the conditions ahead of me? Why am I still getting? Oh, he's so at, he okay. stopped he's at Elizabeth. Elizabeth, yeah. Yeah, we're in 261 territory now, so I'm just gonna follow whatever the automatic signals are telling me to do. Leave the cabs cut out. Yeah, that's a fair move. If he stopped at Elizabeth, I would expect Elmora to be... Because you're merging back onto... Yeah, you're coming back onto track one at Elmora. And there's no other signal past that was we there in the station. Right? I don't think so. So that would be an absolute stop. A distant, would that be an approach? So that might be plausible that that's advanced approach. Probably, yeah. And that's what we're getting. Yeah, but as you can see, it's not coming up on the ADU. On the ADU. Yeah, see, that's the problem. So, I don't believe advanced approach comes up on the ADU anywhere in this game. No, so that yeah. pulse code is broken. Okay. Yeah. So what the, the ADU and the trains is doing in this room is it's looking ahead at the pulse codes that the next signal is projecting into the previous block. So, for whatever reason, this next signal that we're coming up to now is not projecting... 20 pulse codes into the rails of the train which sees clean in this case. Very complicated on the script of this. We're gonna get down to 45 here anyway. I mean at least I got the progression. Yeah. Advance approach, approach. And um, the next signal's on board. Uh yeah. Well that should be an absolute stop. If he's at the station, so. probably he's probably moving now. Where's the next um, automatic? Is it between Elizabeth and North Elizabeth? It should be. Uh... Once he clears that, then you should get a slow approach. Yeah, because that's or, or medium approach. Yeah, sorry. these are Elmora home signals here. Um, and then that's at a stop. The uh, east end of Elmora is at a stop. Is he still at the station? So oh, let me not run it. That's ridiculous, though. You shouldn't have medium approach here. If this is 261 territory, that should be an absolute stop. It should be. Or restrictive. It, it, it probably is, because the problem is it's reading... Um, even though there's no... Even though there's no physical aspect here at the east end of Elmora facing eastbound... Um, it, the game is still reading this as the last signal before the train, so that's where it's, it's parsing part of the, the stop. Yeah, yeah that's, that's an issue. At 562, I might be inclined to give it some leeway, but at 261, absolutely not. Yeah. Just taking a look at the comments while, uh, 
Mike snails through Nomora. I just got an upgrade to approach. Oh yeah, he's... Wait a minute, no, that, that might have been right then. Oh wait, oh there is a, yeah, yeah, there's a I didn't know about that automatic. Okay. So that would have been stop and proceed. Well, no, it, the number plate would have fly stop or something. I don't think that can be a Pepsi or something. But in any case, then the previous signal at Elmora should have been slow approach. Was it? Or was it medium? No. Because it was a red over a flashing yellow. So that's medium. No, 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 medium approach would be fine then. Progression was okay. Maybe it was. I wasn't aware of the existence of that other signal before. Or app. It's got me perplexed. I'm gonna have to look at the uh, track charts later. Yeah, so MBX, if um, if you buy Train Sim World 3 for anything, um, and you're mostly interested in North American content, I would definitely recommend the Acela as a local DLC. Loco DLC. Um, pick up Trenton, too. I mean, they got a bundle going on, I believe the bundle's still going on right now, where you can pick up Boston, the Acela, and Trenton, and then from there, another solid pickup is the Harlem line. Aside from that, I wouldn't touch Long Island Railroad, e even with a 100-foot stick. <laughs> um, that's all I have to say about NA stuff. I can't really speak to German or UK content. Oh, there, I've heard that the community overseas also has a hell of a lot to say about G stuff for like the German routes, too. So I'm going to stay out of that because I don't really know much about the stuff overseas. But just know that the people over there also have bugs that they got. Not just the American stuff. It's everything. It's yeah. a bit of everything. But uh, w these are solid pickups. Th yes. this, this route l leaves a lot to be desired as far as like the timetable. It's not as busy as we would hope it would be. And the signals have some quirks and some flaws here and there. Um... A lot of these are being addressed, some won't be in a timely manner, but I still think it's a solid pickup and you can get a decent experience from it. But definitely Boston. Yes, Boston is very nice. And I'm not biased, even though I made it. <laughs> Just kidding, I'm so fucking biased. Shut the window. Oh, this is an interesting question. Maybe you have some insight on freight operations on the corridor, Mike. Okay. So, Lander484 is asking, I know you could drive CSX trains in the original Northeast Corridor New York. Uh, would there be enough things for them to do on this area or Boston? Yes. So, actually, if you are familiar, um, let me get to... Oh, wait, let's see, what, let's see what the train is doing first, because we're not making North Elizabeth. Um, oh, he's also making... Wait, what? Where is that? Is that lane? What the heck? Okay, I gotta see... First of all, I have to see if there's wire on this track, because I don't think there's... Oh, wait, never mind. No, that's no, track A. That's, that's, that's A. That's track A. That's track A. Oh, they're having me come in on track, um, track one. That's cool. So I should have clears all the way into the airport. Yeah, you should. Yeah. Um, but to get back to... Yeah. Question so free CSX. let me get into uh, Newark Airport first. Uh, that way we can sort of lose some time while we're sitting at the station. Uh, we'll print then that someone got their luggage stuck uh, in the door <laughs> or something. And then I can fly around the map and I can show you sort of uh, what they do in terms of freight operations for the corridor. Uh, in this area, anyway. Yeah, so for Boston, you're, it's, it's tough because they operate from the Reedville Yard. So if you're heading 
you just just go to Reedville in the game, and off to the side of the corridor, you'll see this giant yard that kind of starts sloping up the hill. That is owned by CSX, and they'll do movements from there down the corridor to Attleboro, and then they'll go down, I believe it's called the Middleboro Main Line. I th I, no. Middleboro Subdivision? Why am I thinking Middleboro? Uh, what, what? Anyways, before, just to cut it yeah. real quick. Um, if you're doing track speed, take your reduction here at these signals. So, uh, take about a 15 pound set here. And that should start to bring your train speed down. And then you may or may not need to take a full service uh, right before the end of the platform. Somebody's going to correct me, and I'm going to look like a stooge, but at Attleboro, there's a, there's a secondary that branches off at Boro Interlocking, um, and CSX will go down that to deliver freight, but that's not re um, represented in game at all, so there's really no point other than operating maybe from Reedville Yard down to Attleboro. <laughs> that was close. I came in a little hot. It was pretty close, but I made it. <laughs> That's like one foot off the edge of the, the platform, that yep. last door. Yep. That's sick. That was, uh, remember that story I was telling you about that Metro Park stop I had in real life that one time? About how she was literally, that door was at the end of the platform. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was, that's how that was. Uh, where's the rear of the train? This is bothering me. The secondary at Attleboro. I'm I'm pissed. I'm gonna look this up. Okay. Well, while you look that up, I'm gonna go to the map and I'm gonna show them what freight operations you have on the corridor. Um. So we're at Newark Airport. If you go down, uh, to just past. Oh, it's not in the game. All right. If you go into Google uh Google Maps in real life or Google Earth. And you take a look just to the south, uh, southeast of Newark Airport. That's where CSX Oak Island Yard is. And it cuts in. Uh, see these lead tracks right here? Uh, these lead tracks go uh, to CSX Oak Island Yard. Um, and they come in right underneath that flyover that track one takes. And they cut in at lane. So there's a local job that runs out of Oak Island Yard. And they run down the corridor. I believe in the middle of the day. Um, I don't know if they service the Merc Yard here or not, um, but the, I know they do. They come down a bit. I think it's like OI-88, and they go down, I believe, to Metuchen, because uh, at Metuchen, you, you, there's another freight yard at Metuchen. And then there's another job that I believe it's ME-2. Uh, that's the Metuchen job. Um, it comes out of Metuchen and it runs down the corridor to uh, Delco, which is just west of Jersey Avenue, which is this this industry siding here, and they do some yard switching uh, down here as well, before they come back out onto the main line and they go back to Metuchen Yard for the day. Uh, I am not an expert in freight operations, so that's just sort of my approximation of what happens on the corridor. Um, so don't quote me on it, but as far as any other non-revenue moves, uh, Amtrak will run some non-revenue moves um, between Philly and Adams. So sometimes if they have to move like a stone train or something from uh, the Penn Coach Yard in Philly, they'll take uh, the KP job or the KN, the KN704 job or whatever it is. And they'll come up with the Amtrak uh, diesel switchers, and they'll tow those hoppers up to uh, Adams uh, to stage for whenever they do track work on the racetrack between uh, County and Ham. Uh, so that's something else in terms of uh, freight moves that you could do. I believe there's there may or may not be some freight moves that come out of Morrisville Yard, uh, but I 
somewhat doubt that. I don't think the Morrisville job comes out onto the corridor. I could be wrong. But so the two main jobs that I know of that run on the corridor in this section are the Oak Island job that comes between that runs between Oak Island Yard, uh, that's by the airport and runs down to Metuchen, and then you got the Metuchen local job that runs between Metuchen and uh, Jersey Avenue. So in terms of freight operations, that's that's the extent of my knowledge. I couldn't find the answer. That's right. <laughs> Anyone chime in the chat? Tell me I was wrong. Um. <laughs> Well, Crazy Dash was just asking if uh, CSX uses GP40s. Uh, I think CSX and NS have like a mixture of GP40s and SD40s for corridor service. That's fair. And then um, Props was just saying, SMS lines does switching to the south of Morrisville Yard mm. okay. and uh, uses the thoroughfare track. Right, right. Uh, yes, so that is... The Morrisville job that you hear if you're at Princeton Junction at night, uh, watch waiting for the uh, new Acela test train, you'll hear that SMS job on the radio talking to uh, I believe it's C Tech. Uh, I forget what C Tech. I think it's C Tech Seven. They talk to. Could be wrong. Forget where C Tech Eight takes over. Um, drops is saying C Tech Seven. Yeah. Okay. Seven. Clear at Hunter. Well, you're switching. Oh, what the heck? Why? Whatever, I just killed everybody. I'm sure you could go through a number 20 switch at 60. You probably could, it just wouldn't be fun. They, um, down here at Wickford, as soon as they hit the uh, limited clear signal, they'll just gun it. And I think I was at the end of the MBTA train leaving Wickford, and it was going over 50 <laughs> by, the t by the time my part of the train reached the cross course. That's funny. And it felt fine. That was a badass. He didn't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> keep you on one until uh dock and then they'll cross you over at this switch here mm -hmm. onto track one because if you don't or actually not even at that switch they have a, another switch down here that they can cross yeah. over one at because if you don't cross over there then you come into newark on track a which is used just not terribly often yeah it may be atypical but i mean it's still a valid move to switch you it onto yeah Alright, Crazy. Take care, buddy. Thank you for joining while you could. See you later, man. We're coming up on West Dock, and we have a clear. We are not switching tracks anymore. For now. Cabs are probably going to give me something else, though. Yep, cabs are going to give me an approach. Which does not conform. have a 35 mile an hour speed limit coming up so I am going to take a minimum set bring the train speed down fine that is a weird progression man yeah I don't know <laughs> clear to approach and then you pass the approach and you get restricting Feels like I'm on the Long Island Railroad again. <laughs> Did you know that they have Approach 15? Really? Yeah. They'll use Approach, like, if the next signal is really, really close to a next stop signal. They'll use Approach, but then give you 15 in the cab, as if it's like a restricting. Curious. <laughs> yeah. Now you know why it was such a nightmare, scripting those signals for Train Sim Classic.
That's another thing that's been fixed. Um, the white light flashing on the spider signals, for anybody wondering. And whenever the next patch hits. Okay, where is the next train ahead of me? He just cleared Swift. He's on his... He's almost at Portal. Yeah, that spider signal's a mess. And I think on this track, it's supposed to display approach medium. Yes, because you're crossing over from one to two at uh, East Dock. Right. I know so... the next signal, like the second signal ahead, is medium clear. Yeah. Shrops is like, thank God it's fixed. <laughs> It haunts me in my dreams, too. I have lost sleep over this. Not really, but I am disturbed by it. It's not even a spider signal in real life anymore. I think they replaced it. When I was at Newark Penn uh, a couple weeks ago, waiting for the Acela that took me to Boston, I, I filmed that signal progression. And I have it on my hard drive somewhere, but it's definitely, it's definitely no longer a spider signal. The one on the one on track one there. Huh. It, yeah, it's not like that anymore. What would they have replaced it with? I'm not sure. We can look at it. Uh, I can look at. I can look for it later. Oh, I'm sure somebody in here knows. Maybe yeah. somebody can tell us. What did they replace the spider signal at Newark Penn track one with? It's just a regular two head asp. Did they position it on the platform instead? To the no, left? it's still it's still hanging from the ceiling. It's like that, but it just hangs from the ceiling. Interesting. Shrop says it's still a spider signal. I gotta look at it then, because it, it looked like it looked like it was something else when I was there last time. Okay. It was pretty recent. So. And if it was a spider signal, it wasn't displaying. It wasn't. It didn't look like that. Like it, what the aspect it was displaying wasn't wasn't like that. But maybe it's because I've never seen that signal in the game uh, display anything besides like a stop or a clear. So I gotta take. I gotta look at it. part of the route is a nightmare as far as signal goes. Absolute nightmare. The signal progressions are all over the place. Clear it, Ray. Clear, clear it, Ray. Second time you've been up to my house, right? Yeah. Last Second time was time, five uh, years ago. Yeah. Right? That was a bit of... I think the last time he was up here was when Northeast Corridor New York, the first Northeast Corridor, was um, just about to be released. So to put that into perspective. You can if you have, you have uh, the, uh, the original game. Yeah, TSW 2020. <laughs> no, I don't think I have that. Probably for the best. Yeah. <laughs> I remember uh, I remember running the ACS 64 uh, in that route and going like, "Where's my blended braking? It doesn't work right." <laughs> that was the least of my concerns. Yeah. Yo, five star gamer, thanks for joining, buddy. Uh, I'm doing good. How are you doing, Mike? I'm doing right. Um, it'd be nice if we had, uh, the cab signals were in a better condition, but, you know, I'll take what I can get. That's why we cut them out, right? Yep. I could totally crash into something right now, but I don't think I will. No, you're not gonna. So, 
this short stretch of track that's 90 miles an hour in between uh, the turnpike and portal bridge, usually you get up to about like 80 miles an hour before you have to start braking for, for the bridge. So that's what I'm going to do. Get up to 80 and I'll take like a 12 to 15 pound reduction. We should come right back down to uh, 60 right before the bridge. So 12 pounds, 13 pounds, close enough. Take another four pounds. Headlights, bell, and release. What was that that you did with the headlights and portal? Uh, so what I was actually doing is I, I, I dimmed the headlights for the oncoming train. I was just putting them back to bright. Oh, okay. Okay, I should get downgrade in the cab to 45 miles an hour uh, for the crossover onto track A at Zakakis. So I should get it right at this block point here. I'm not even sure if that's accurate. Uh, it should be, because the next, uh... Yeah, but this is 261, right? This is 261. Oh, uh, no, 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 we're... This is, um... This is, uh, 562. It's 562 between Newark and New York. Not all of it. It's split up into bits and chunks. Mm -hmm. That's weird. But in any case, you're down to speed. Yeah. So. There's another Acela. Ripping through at 150. Train was 2164. For anybody keeping track. Props says. Yeah, props in no I say it is 562. But so you have the home signal at portal. And then you have a block point and then you have the home signal at um lack. Would you not get approach limited at portal or is that not capable of displaying that? I'll have to look at the track charts I have, but I, I'm, I'm just curious, because I don't have those handy right now. Yeah, they all act as distance to each other, I know. Portal to LAC to Erie to Allied to Bergen. Like Swift to Portal makes more sense because you have those, um, I think it's three block points in between. That makes more sense. I don't know. I'm still coming to grips with 562. Alright. Limited clear at Erie. The next and last station stop is <laughs> New York Penn Station. Oh shit. Should I have had the sounds? <laughs> should, should we have done that? We didn't have enough time to coordinate. Uh, yeah, I, know. <laughs> I don't know how we would have even figured out how to do that. Because I would have had to like move the sounds onto like your computer. Well, no. I would just have them on my phone and just, oh, and just put it next to the mic. <laughs> I'll send them to you next time you have the raw files. Well, I am going to be running an MBTA service after um, you get into Penn Station. 
and, and we don't have <laughs> those sounds <laughs> queued up, guys. Not that we're going to be in the passenger cars anyway. Yeah. Oh, that'd be some funny shit. I don't know if you heard that, but that's an in MBTA inbound to Boston. Or it might be putting up in the yard for the night. The yard being the uh, Pawtucket layover yard. Let me check what train that would be. What is it? It is nearly six. I believe that was a dead end. It could be. A lot of the t ones this, this time of day uh, just go back into Pawtucket layover. That was one of the challenges developing the Boston timetable was figuring out which ones like start from the yard and which ones end in the yard. I imagine that's a similar problem that would come up with this room, right, Mike? Um, I believe Joe actually had the uh, rotation sheet, so he knew exactly what was happening. He wrote the schedule. As far as like which ones would have started at Morrisville. Yeah. freaked out on me. <laughs> but, um, uh, you can see, like, everything. Alright, so while we do our slow creep through the North River Tunnels into Penn Station, let's take a look at some of the comments in the chat. So, Lander484, he asks, do Amtrak get along well with the other freight and local commuters that run on their lines? Um, it's a bit of a mixed bag. So, sure. <laughs> Metro North, they own their own line, right? Yeah, Metro North owns between New Rochelle and uh, New Haven. Yeah, so we're kind of, uh, we, I, I say we, but I mean Amtrak. Amtrak is kind of at the mercy of Metro North dispatchers when between that territory. Um, obviously, Amtrak dispatchers are going to give preference to their own stock over, like, a deadhead move or something some other weird freight move. Most of the freight stuff ends up happening at night anyway and doesn't end up interfering with the passenger operations. The big issue, the big struggle, comes when Amtrak is operating on lines that they don't own. And that happens a lot in lines that go out to like Chicago or whatever where they're traversing freight lines. So the freight railroads are obviously going to there might be some sort of agreement where they give Amtrak priority at times, but a lot of the times these trains are late, and it, uh, it does create some strife. Eastern Route Mainline videos. Thanks, thank you for uh, tuning in, man. We're doing good. The collaboration we all wanted to see. <laughs> We've known each other for what, like six years? Uh, yeah, a good chunk of time now. Yeah. Yeah, we've never done collaboration like this. This was a very sudden, impromptu visit. Not complaining. I've had a blast. Mike's always a good time. Super knowledgeable, by the way. If you haven't already figured out. The guy explained earlier, but I didn't even know his breadth of knowledge when it came to steam locomotives. Holy shit. Yeah, it's fine.
How would you feel, like, if uh, Dovetail ended up extending the line east to maybe, like, I don't know, Stamford or something? This line? Yeah. I would say that's wishful thinking. Um, that's a pretty good chunk of trackage you're talking about there, east from New York to Stamford. Yeah. Um, but definitely would be interesting. I, I could definitely... I don't know if they would try to do something similar, like merge uh, Harlem, create the extension at Pelham to cut in at New Rochelle, and then extend here from Gate all the way to New Rochelle, and then build brand new from New Rochelle all the way to, uh, I guess, Stanford. But I only say Stanford because um, the Cellas, if I remember correctly, they do stop. They do it. stop there, yeah. Yeah. Uh, some of them stop there. Some of them. Um, but, um, yeah, I, I, that'd be really cool to see them, uh, try to get the M8s right, for sure. I think that would be interesting. Oh, yeah, that's right. You hit New Rochelle, you have to include an M8. Never pulled into one of these tracks before. There's supposed to be, um, bumper blocks, right? There are. They got... They were removed because trains were spawning into the block, and then they were immediately derailing. So they just simply took the bumper blocks out. I thought they should have just moved them further back towards the wall. I don't know why they didn't just do that, but... This solution works as well. Damn, that was a long-ass run. Oh, gosh. Okay, I'm <laughs> ready for a break. Brandon's going to take over the controls from here. He's going to run that service uh, on, on Boston. Yeah, do you guys have any recommendations for a service that we can run on Boston? Um, just so you guys are aware, uh, we're just going to take a little break, and then I'm going to run an MBTA service in an F40, because I haven't done that on stream yet. From Boston, uh, I want to do a full Providence line run. So if you have a preferred service, um, time of day, weather conditions, whatever. All right, we'll be back in like three minutes.
Oh yeah, okay. All right, so just trying to figure out a service. Did you guys have any recommendations? They didn't say anything yet. No, okay. Yeah. Awesome. But yeah, I do want to do a full line run from Boston down to Providence. I guess we could do the same thing and try to do like a reverse peak. So there's a lot of um, there's a lot of like opposing traffic. So if we go up here, mm -hmm. there's a few services. Like if you pick either one of these two services, you should see a lot of inbound. Yeah, I'll probably choose like eight oh three. Yeah. Um. Did we have any preferences on? Like the weather. I know somebody before was uh, talking about um, s heavy snow, but I think Mike is going to reserve that for his little ALP wheel slip demonstration. It's not that's not going to be a full blown run. Uh, I don't think it, it depends on how much he wants to draw it out. Do zero visibility weather and no HUD to test your skills. <laughs> This motherfucker. Oh, um, he's, he's issuing the well, challenge, Brandon. Oh, well, okay. What if we do it in the summer? But wait, no. Is it, in the summer, that would be... You'd have... Sunlight. Yeah. At this time, right? At this time of day, yeah. Alright, so March. That would be early enough where it wouldn't be freezing, but you could have a pretty good lightning storm, right? You want well if you want the the most slippery, technically light rain is the most slippery. Well, I think he meant so zero visibility, zero maybe visibility. foggy. Only because you can't see, but then that is a challenge. Yeah, I did that with um Pixelade yeah. recently with NJT. Yeah, which was fun. I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. Do you guys prefer foggy mm. or lightning storm, or may, or maybe you have some mm. other recommendation? I'll do whatever you want. <laughs> Tom says lightning storm. The lightning looks bad ass in this game. Have it you seen it? it? I have not actually. Holy shit. Does it look good? Yeah. Lightning storm it is, I guess. Oh, yeah. A bunch of people. Are saying All right. They're saying storm storms. Yeah. All right. Um, March is always very unpredictable when it comes to weather in this part of the country. So, yeah. Let's let's pick March. March fucks us every year. <laughs> <laughs> it really does. Yeah, we'll get like two feet of snow in March. Well, we're Just getting cause. like six, seven inches of snow tomorrow, yeah, right? Yeah, I know. It'll in, be fun. Actually, it should be starting to snow pretty soon. They mentioned like 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. or whatever. Mm. I don't know what the hell they said. All right, cool. So let's get this thing set up. Engine run on, generator field on, control and fuel pump on. Cut off valve in, automatic brake. We'll set it to like service 50. That's usually what I do to forestall any kind. Penalty, set the reverser to forward. Front headlights, we'll keep it dim for now. I'll kind of do like the Penn Station rule. Set it to bright once we're about to leave. And. The lights on. Yeah, I could do that too. That always looks nice. And I gotta be prepared to use the, the wipers, of course. I don't think there's anything special up here that we have to do. Turn the number board lights on. Rear marker, does is that train line or uh, that's probably local. So probably uh platform lights, step lights you can probably turn on as well. Is that up here? Uh the platform lights were up there. That's fine. Yeah. The step lights are down there next to the um gauge lights. Uh, next to the lights. instrument lights, yeah. Ah, step lights, yeah. Cool. So if you go Ooh. outside you can see all the lights beyond. And then I'll enable Excess and stuff. 
You used to have to do two toots of the horn for uh, leaving South Station, but uh, you no longer have to. Where are you going? So we're coming up on Tower 1, interlocking. It looks like we got a slow clear. Awesome. Throughout the limits of Tower 1, you have to sound the bell and not exceed 10 miles per hour. So it's a little bit of a chug, but uh, it's fine. Oh, and the rain's coming down. Alright. Figure out where these wiper controls are. <laughs> oh, wait, no, they're going. Very fast. Turn back on the HUD really quick just to check the wiper. What? Oh, it's like a. Yeah, it's like a. That's pretty good. I like that. 75%. Alright, so slow clear tower. Well, oh, I want to do a running brake test. Yeah, once we get up to 10, I'll do a running brake test. Um, take 12. What it was? For New Jersey Transit, it's 12. You'd probably be okay just doing a minimum set here. Do the blended brakes work on this, or...? Um, I think if you keep the automatics in for a while, the dynamics will start to we'll take start over and then okay. release. Because I remember when it first, when this first came out, they didn't have that. Right. I guess as we go further down the line, we'll... Yeah. Okay, yeah. Alright, so good running brakes. We're almost out of Tower 1. The rain sound is loud. Um, <laughs> um, that's out of here. Sure, it happens all the time. I was looking at the chat really quick and I saw Taylor said the rain sound is loud. If it's too, it shouldn't be too loud compared to the rest of the running sounds. If it is, I'll cut down the game volume of it. Okay, I'll take down the game volume a little bit. It's tough to gauge. Especially when you have two people trying to share one microphone. So I'll bring this down to like 35% game yeah, volume. There we go. Thank you for letting me know, because I wouldn't know unless you told me. Is it possible to... Um, well, yeah. I mean, you can hear us just fine, though. Yeah, I mean, I can... I turned up the gain just a little bit. It's always tough during a stream, but thank you for being um, straightforward and honest with us. Alright, so we're out of Tower 1, and now we are in Cove Interlocking. So I am, I'm still running under a clear cap signal, and I'm going to accelerate to 30 before getting into Boston Back Bay. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> I'm trying to focus on other things. <laughs> <laughs> they're like on the radio, they're yelling at you. That's fine. <laughs> Mike's a perfectionist. I'm still learning. <laughs> and there's no horn blasting here before um, platforms. Mm, yeah. I still gotta learn how to read the um the brake meters on this thing. I was I was kinda confused. Maybe you could help me. Yeah, when we come to the stop, shift the camera over. Shift the camera over? What do you mean? So there should be more than one there's more than two gauges. So I'm in minimum right now. Yeah. And then I'm starting to do service stuff. So this should be 
suppression right here. Yes. Okay, that's way too much. I'm gonna graduate off. And I'm gonna figure out a way to turn off these wipers. Get the... That did the trick. Yeah. <laughs> Thank v you. and shift V are usually the wiper controls. So they, they pull the, the loco into the um, the tunnel a bit. Because of the um the fumes. Yeah, so there's an exhaust vent right up here. So I'm just gonna throw it into suppression here. Uh let's see how that looks. They wouldn't have opened that first car anyway, I don't think. So you could have pulled further in, and you usually, um, they would open this car. This like, door, yeah, the rear door. That door a little bit like, down here. Alright, go zoom in on the gauges. Yeah. The gauge cluster. Turn the, turn the cab light on, actually. Okay. Alright, so it should be all labeled for you here. Yeah, so, so I should be looking at this one, right? When you it comes should to be. The yeah, so so because that's your equalizing reservoir gauge, and then your uh, your brake cylinder and your brake pipe are on yeah. the second gauge. Go back to that first one. Application pipe, pressure pipe. Okay. So, uh, I don't. I'm not a hundred percent sure what you're supposed to see on the third gauge over there, but I'm. Pretty sure the suppression pipe comes into play when you get like a cab signal system alarm and you put it in suppression. So yeah, so I'm just looking at that white needle on the far on the far left, left and that's how I'm indicating suppression. All right, so uh, we're getting out of Boston Back Bay. Our next station stop is Ruggles. It's right outside. This one. Love it. Ruggles is a station I have. A lot of history with. Um, for a time, I worked up in Boston and, and commuted from Wakeford Junction to Ruggles a few days a week, and then walked from Ruggles Station to uh, the company that I was um, contracted for at the time. So it's a it's a nice station. It's really not bad at all. So I gotta, it's weird because I gotta kind of keep my camera in such a way that I can see that brake gauge, like maybe right there is a good compromise. Yeah, I usually like to have the, the brake gauge on the bottom left because as long as, as long as the right side of the screen, you can still see the speedometer. You don't have to be looking like straight ahead yeah. in, from the camera view because you can turn your own head. Um, I just like to see as much as I can. Drop says, I would love to see CTT 4 and 5. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot more... Um, yeah, there's a lot more rolling stock. Variety. Could be in the game. Um, what I would like to see is, I would have liked to see them use trains of differing sizes. Uh, because it seems like all of the timetable service trains for MBTA, they're all the same train set. It's like one locomotive, five locomotive. Yeah, but pretty much. If you go into the scenario creator, they have different length trains for for the MBTA stuff. They just don't use them in the time. Which I thought. Was yeah, it is. It is goofy. Oh, the blended brakes do work. They do. Ooh, yeah. No, nice. they're definitely cutting in. Yeah. So. Normally, um, they pull a, a, the loco a little bit past the, um, the platform here. I'm going to stop pretty much dead on. That's about, about what it is. At, uh, the station. They usually take it so the first car is on here. Or first door on the first car. I have not perfected these, like Mike has perfected measures yet. Not even fun. <laughs> hey, as you as you go down the line, just work on graduating off before you come yeah to, yeah to find the stop. That'll probably help you because you're coming in a little short at some of these stations. So if you start to graduate off, you'll pull further forward. Like you want. Yeah, I gotta be a little bit more patient because I am getting here on time. So, yeah, it's just it's just a matter of practice, guys. The AI needs a lot of practice. 
Yeah, I gotta get, uh, I got muscle memory for yeah, the, um, gotta use the, for the tab. Uh, so, our next stop is the route. So, we're gonna be going through Forest Hills, Hyde Park, Reedville, and then we're gonna stop at Route 28. So, how exactly are you? So, I'm not putting it into, like, the suppression notch, quote-unquote, on the brake stand, so I'll just turn my HUD back on. So there's an actual suppression area once you get fully past service. I don't know why that is. I really don't. I am not a brake expert. I am a brake dumbass. Uh, clear, by the way. So what I'm looking for, and it's the same thing that we were looking for with New Jersey Transit, was you do a brake application, and you're waiting for the equalizing reservoir. That's why I have the HUD up right now. The EQ here, which says 110 right now, you'll apply service brake until um, that reads 94 or lower and then you can um, hold it there. So when I'm doing it HUDless, I'm looking at this white needle on this gauge. Um, because it says white means equalizing uh, equalizing reservoir. So I'm kind of using that as uh, my indicator braking force to use. So yeah, 94 for suppression, and then 84-ish for, for full service. Tab light off. Yeah, thank you. I forgot that we had left it on since you wanted to look at the, the brake cages. You can't hear them right now, Mike. Yeah, I heard them earlier when we were checking the volume. It actually sounds pretty good. Yeah. I don't see any light. Oh, I'm sure that we will. Um, let's get out of this uh, Southwest Corridor Trench first. Yeah. Uh, Alright, we gotta clear it planes. This is planes and trail. Yeah, see, this is where this is where Brandon is an expert, and I <laughs> I know generally where I am, but I don't know most of the interlocking. The only interlocking game I know is transfer. So. Yeah, transfer is a big one. Yeah. Um, Planes gets its name because it goes underneath the um, section of Boston called Jamaica Plain. Mm. All right, so we're pretty much up to speed. Oh, there goes a HSP forty six. Yes, that's what we need in this freaking game, man. Passing forest hills right now, we gotta clear a forest. Yeah, so the the locomotive is able to go faster than 80, but it's the, the coaches really that are physically limited. To 80 miles an hour, so a lot of people get confused. No, I'm not even kidding. <laughs> you know. No, uh, I know, I know. <laughs> oh, what are they saying? Uh, Dan was like, where are the buy levels about me? Yo, I can't make this <laughs> shit. What's going on, man? <laughs> Love you, man. Um, if you guys have been paying attention to any recent mods that have come out for the Excel Express, like the, uh, the horn sounds and all that, um, Dan... Burgess in the chat was the guy that provided those sounds. Uh, it's been getting like A plus reviews so far. The mod. Big shout out to Dan for all his help on all these projects. It's super, super helpful. But yeah, a lot of people get confused because they see 90 on the ADU and they're like, oh, why can't I go 90? It's just because of what you're towing. Why doesn't it just say 80 then? I don't know. It says 90. What do you want me to tell you? Well, this is the distance signal for four. Uh, sorry, not four. Stop. Breathe. Interlocking. 
We already passed forest. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> that's the same situation like we were talking about. If you were in the stream earlier when we were running the uh, New Jersey Transit equipment, that was the same issue with so like how I mentioned that the dual modes are um, dual modes on New Jersey Transit. The ALP 45s are only certified for 90 miles an hour, but all of the coaches are certified for 100. So if you have uh, an eight car multi-level train that has an ALP 45 for power, you're still going to see ACES give you the clear 100 in the cap. You just can't do 100 because you know that your locomotive is only certified for 90. So that's sort of, you just sort of have to self-govern. Yeah, it's all about self-governing. Um, I've been on MBTA trains and between Mansfield and Attleboro, these fuckers, they don't care. They'll go up to like 85 miles an hour. Like nobody's checking them. It's, it's cool, and I, I think the equipment can realistically handle it. It's just, for the rules, they're limited to 80. Yeah, it's the same thing for the Arrow uh, multiple units in New Jersey Transit. The Arrow 3 MUs are only good for 80, but I'm pretty sure you still see the, uh, the ADU show you clear 100. So you just have to... I've been on Arrow sets where guys on the racetrack between New Brunswick and, and Hamilton, they'll get up to like 85, 87. Um, there's the, the train isn't going to penalize you for doing that, but if your quote unquote your black box gets pulled, then you might get in trouble. So it's, it's really just you're you're pushing your luck if you're going to try to. Oh yeah, that's right. The equipment, uh, the equipment limitation. But the reason for the arrows only being able to do 80 is because whenever they, when they rebuilt them back in the 90s, uh, they messed up the, the gearboxes. And the gearboxes were overheating. Uh, doing 100, so they, they dropped the speeds down from 100 to 90, and then when they were still overheating, they dropped them further to 80. Uh, so that's why the Arrow 3s are limited to 80. Oh, yeah, I don't know of any exact reasons why the coaches are limited to 80, other than um, just, like, design tolerances. Like, I don't really know. It does show 80 on the Arrow 80. For the arrows? Yeah. Yeah, I, I know on this equipment it shows 90. Anyway, we just cleared transfer. So, we've got uh, a little more than a mile, but we stop at... Yeah, the Silverliner 4s are still good for 95. So I'm going to start breaking. Just a, a minimum reduction. Maybe a little bit more than a minimum reduction right now. You should be fine at where you are, actually. Keep it there until you see the platform, and then if you feel like you need to take more when you hit the platform, you Well, more. I don't want to hit the platform at any more than, like, 40. You should be okay, I think. I'm, taking, down the, 55 I'm taking the weather into account. Yeah. I'll back off a little bit. Just being safe. Because of the weather and all that. So I'm at the block point right before the station. Yeah, I can see the platform. Now. Yep. You're good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now this is this is this is gonna be fun. They're coming into Route 128, guys. Love it. Oh, I just saw some lightning. I missed it. All right, so I'm gonna throw it into suppression and then graduate off. Good. Yeah, that was better, right? That was better. Yeah. The brakes seem to release pretty slowly. Um... Oh my god. Sheets of rain. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, it's a good thing the passengers have umbrellas. I'm playing this... on a really high-end gaming system. And it's like... 40 FPS in the rain. Like, this wet... The dynamic weather is amazing to look at, but oh my god, does it tank the FPS. <laughs> it's beautiful. We got some time. We do. Lots of scary Oh! Ooh. I just... My camera just got smacked. What the hell is this? I wonder if that's... <laughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> no, seriously. Why is he wrong railing and expressing through the route? I wonder if he's deadheading to, like, stone or something. That actually could be the case. Yeah. Actually, I'm gonna have to... Because it's been so long since I made the time tick. So, that actually could be a stone deadhead. 
I didn't even consider the fact. <laughs> Dan says running in the middle of her. Yeah, they can pass you on the opposite track, sure. Broken set. <laughs> uh, it's funny, he had his rear headlights on, too. Yeah, well, the AI, they don't know how to, yeah. they, they don't know how to drive. Hey, that actually happens in real life. I've seen guys go to deadheads and they don't change the headlights. <laughs> yeah, you're right, though. I didn't even think of it. That it probably is going, uh, we'll find out soon enough. At this time of day, I would expect that to be just over the head. Yeah, this is early morning. The engineer is in the head. <laughs> um, okay. Alright, so I am stopping at Kent Junction. You should be making it also. I don't really know. Route 128. Not zero visibility, so. Sorry if you're disappointed the person that <laughs> asked for that. <laughs> but it's close enough. The um the rain is just reflecting the light back at me and it's blinding. Dan is leaving, so. But Dan Bridges? Hey buddy, have a good night, man. Thank you again for all of your uh your help throughout all this shit. Appreciate you, bro. Well, hello from snowy Rhode Island. Neil says hello. Hey, Neil. Nice of you to join again, man. I'm in a regular viewer of the streams. I appreciate you showing up. We got clear in the cab. And uh, we got a clear at the junction distance. Got about two or so miles till Canton Junction. I haven't made a stop at Canton Junction in a while. Not gonna lie. I think they modeled the high levels at this station. Yes, there's many highs there. Alright, so, yeah, exactly. So, I'm gonna have to... Yeah, I'll just put the first one on the mini high. I gotta think of where I want to do my stopping point, though. I'm gonna want to break between the next block point and the junction homes. I know that much. I'm not as practiced as Mike, and I'll admit. That. But I'll give it an honest shot. This is the block point I'm talking about at mile post 215, approximately. I think it's 215.2. Uh, a little bit, let's see. Yeah, so there's mile post 215. So I'm gonna throw it into idle. I'm gonna wait to see the junction home signal clearly before I start doing anything. I can see that it's a clear. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a minimum application for now. And play with it from there. Hey, I just caught that weird train. Why is he just chilling at Junction? Wait a minute. Oh, that's our guy. That's our guy that just blew through. Yo, what? What's he doing? <laughs> Maybe they're crossing him over behind you. Oh, wait a minute. There's a, another train there that's coming in from the Stoughton line. Let me release. I, I put the brakes on too early. This is interesting. So these guys are at a stalemate. Probably. Back to minimum application. Yeah, these AI are just so dumb.
right, so I'm doing suppression right now. We're going uphill considerably, so I'm gonna start graduating off. Reapply. Let's see where I uh, made it. Yep. Right on the mini high. Perfect. Except there's no stairs there in real life. Only here. This. <laughs> These guys are crazy. Good shit, though. So far, so good. Yeah. Spent a few good nights here. A couple bad... Uh, one bad night, too. The night that, uh... So my favorite band is Linkin Park. Night that Chester Bennington in 2017 committed suicide. Um, me and my buddy Chris Smith and some others came up here and just uh, chilled out and uh, just buffed and hung out and played some Lincoln Park stuff, um, remembering Chester. What's going back on back there? What do you mean? Uh, now people are just getting on and they're walking slowly without their umbrellas. In this monsoon. Oh, look at the map. They are doing a Texas standoff. Wait a minute, this one's creeping. But he's gotta stop. Can't worry about them. Alright, so our next stop is Sharon. Which is about, I don't know, three or so miles away. Let me double check. Yeah, three point. Right around mile post 211. Yeah, what's up, buddy? So, Brian, if I get confused about when I come Ah, okay. That's, a, that's an easy one. So, when you see red over red, like, uh, let's, t let's take a look at this signal right here, at junction interlocking. This is a red over red, and there is no number plate visible on the signal. Because of that, you know it's an absolute stop. Do not proceed past that signal. Now, we're going to come up on some other signals that are a little bit different after this curve, and um, I'll show you the, um, the number plate that I'm referring to. If you see the number plate present, but it's still red over red, then you know that you can stop. So come to a complete stop before the signal, but then proceed at restricted speed. There's a whole bunch of rules for how to control the train at restricted speed, but now you know which ones you can and cannot pass. However, there's an exception, and it's the one right by Ruggles. The tunnels, they didn't put a number plate on there. Um, at the ones in the tunnels. Oh, shit. Yeah. The, the fucking game crashed. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Alright, no, I'll pick it up at, um, I'll pick it up at Sharon. Oh, Lord of Mercy. I'm in the public branch, too. I'm not even in dev. <laughs> oh, fun time. Alright, see if it pick. let's see if it picks up, Mike. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Yeah, I picked up. Um, yeah, you should see that momentarily. <laughs> Figures. Um, so we're gonna let's pick it up at Sharon. What was the time approximately? All right. Let me hang on. Hang on a second. Hang yeah, on. yeah, yeah. Go back in the. Yeah, if you can go back in the stream. Ah, uh, as yeah, because I I uh, about seven uh seven o'clock. All right, so yeah, if I start in sh wait no, I could just start at Canton at seven, right? No, uh, because the departure time is before seven at Canton. Okay, so I'll just do on foot. This happens sometimes, guys. Uh, Sharon at 
Seven, seven and this was March. Early March. Tenth. Ah, shit. There we go. March. Tenth. <laughs> in uh, lightning storm. Yes. <laughs> it's not often that that happens. Um, I do have some pretty significant tweaks going on with this game, but whatever. Max asks. Do you have to ask permission to proceed? You do not. Yeah, I mean, uh, understand the signal rule is stop and proceed. Stop so it's implied, and then proceed. Yeah. Uh, it's implied that if you come to a stop, that you can then proceed. Yeah, I mean, some of the more cautious engineers may call it in, be like, "Hey, um, train MBTA 803 at block point 2113, encountering a stop and proceed." Or stopping and proceeding, or something like that. You know, you might you might call it in, but you, I don't think you really have to. Let's take a look at where our train is that we're going to commandeer. Oh, it's yeah, not he's far. Coming out, yeah, he's coming out of there now. Yeah, he's coming out of the dead section. That's fine. We'll just uh, enjoy the beautiful sunrise in Sharon. <laughs> Gives me a chance to have a few more sips of my drink. What's everybody drinking tonight, by the way? <laughs> yeah. That's the question. Mike's drinking root beer. Wow. Mike has root beer, guys. <laughs> he was trying to find... What were you trying to find? The um. Oh, the glass bottle Cokes? I wasn't really... The glass bottle Cokes with the real sugar? Yeah, I, I, I didn't know... I know Dave's has that, um... The Stewart's mm, craft. That's good. The craft soda. You didn't yeah. spot that? I wasn't looking for it. Oh, if I had if I had called that out, would you have gotten that instead? I might have, yeah. Oh shit, okay. And I've got some uh, Irish whiskey. But that's almost out, so I might go into the Scotch whiskey. <laughs> that's okay. That'll be for once we uh, hit Mansfield and don't freaking crash again. So our train just rounded the curve at milepost right around 211. I think 211 is right at the platform. Something like that. But we will commandeer this service. Tom, my man, Brandy. <laughs> uh, any particular flavor? My uh, late grandfather. Used to be very, very fond of, uh, what was it? Apricot brandy. Eastern Route Mainline Videos, Fanta Orange. Orange soda used to be my favorite soda when I was a kid. It was a toss up between that and cream soda. Mm. Weird, right? I don't drink soda anymore. I'm not going to say that too loud because Mike's going to shoot me. <laughs> Get out! <laughs> <laughs> this bitch mine! <laughs> Alright. Oh, you got to set everything up again, don't you? Yeah, I do. He, <laughs> set, he set it up wrong. Oh, did he? Oh, I'm sure he did. <laughs> he has the reverser in neutral. Um, cage lights <laughs> on, step lights on... <laughs> Um, he at least cut in the brakes, but that's, that's good. <laughs> Damn, up. Uh, up. Let's take a look up here. Um, platform lights, we'll, we'll put those on. Oh, he had the front number light on, that's cute. Okay, I, I'm happy with this. Wait a minute, where'd the brakes come from? <laughs> yeah, he did a bad job. So how do you use the milepost, and how far is he to Oh, alright, that's a good question. So, the mileposts help you determine where you are, and it, it's especially helpful when you're learning the territory, and even once you've learned the territory, when you're operating in low visibility conditions. So I'll, I'll give you 
for example, let's just get started first. So in real life, and obviously they, they couldn't simulate this just because it would take too much time, there are reflectorized signs affixed to every catenary pole that shows the mile post, and then there's like a horizontal line, and then the cat pole number after that mile post. So like this, I don't know the exact number for this one, maybe like 210 underscore 74 or something like that. So that would mean that it's the 74th cat pole in mile post 210. So the mile posts are useful because they help you let you know where you are, pretty much. So if you know that Sharon is at mile post, um, like, uh, thanks. Um, appreciate it. <laughs> He's positioning the eye camera for me. Um, if you know, for instance, that, or let's say Mansfield is at mile post 204.0, which it is. Once you're at 205, or 206 or, or wherever you you got you got a you know that you're two miles away at that point so it helps kind of confirm your position and you can also use it in cases like this block point 2102 you know that you are at milepost 210.2 there's the milepost 210 so it, it's just to help as you go along You got the same thing in New Jersey Transit. Um, the mileposts are a bit smaller, aren't they? Yeah, they're like, like little toothpicks. They're easy, they're easy to miss if you don't look. Yeah, little toothpicks. And sometimes, especially the ones that are on the platform the stations, you don't know where to look. So I hope that answered your question. It's a good question. I pointed it out to um, Joe, um, British Ace. I don't know if you guys have seen his live streams, but uh, I joined one morning as I was just having coffee. He's live streaming Trenton, and I'm like, Joe, um, just so you know, like, look at the look at the milepost, and, and you can know where you are because he's trying to spot out where Hamilton is. Oh, wow, that's at milepost 53. I'm like, look, look, look at the look, look at the right. You can figure out where you are. And he's like, oh, that's awesome. So I know that I'm six miles from Hamilton. So he keeps that in his mind, and, and it really helps. We just passed mile post 209, which means we are five miles from Mansfield. I guarantee that's a next stop. Yeah. See, you can even look at the HUD and confirm we're eight miles to our stopping point at Mansfield. Do they do similar stuff for New Jersey Transit using the mile post as a? Uh... I'm sure they do. Yeah, I'd say so. Oh, so the marker lights are on. I didn't have to do anything. Alright, so we are up to track speed. I'm gonna... We're going downhill a little bit here. Sharon is the uh, highest point in the Northeast Corridor. It's a little known fact. Some, uh, it's over 200 feet above sea level. But from there, it just keeps going down and down and down and down and down. So, kind of backing off on the, the throttle, kind of coasting as I uh, maintain 80 miles per hour. We're at mile post 207 right now, and Amtrak train just passed my house. Was that an inbound from the Boston, you think? It sounded like we'll it to out. me. Yeah, we'll find out in so it's kind of fucked up. I've lived here for eight years now. Almost eight years. And I can tell by the vibrations what direction the train's going. <laughs> <laughs> You just get a feel for it after a while. It's weird. But sometimes they'll do maintenance on that switch right outside my front door. And 
after they do the maintenance to it, it doesn't feel as bad for maybe like five days or something, and then they, they keep fucking slamming it and slamming it and slamming it, and then it goes back to the way it was, hence why they do so much maintenance around these parts. When a train hits a switch at 125 and 150 miles an hour, 40 times a day, <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna do some damage. Anyway, so we are about a mile and a half at this point from Mansfield, coming up on the distant signal from Mansfield, which is displaying a clear aspect. Don't gotta do anything. I'm gonna except put the throttle into idle. I pretty much had it there anyway. That's mile post 205 off to the left. I've rail fanned here a couple of times with my buddy Chris. Uh, over here is Merkin's chocolate, or what used to be like a chocolate. I'm going to throw the brakes into a minimum uh, application right now. There's another company over here that they deliver freight to, uh, I think it's Blaine's Chemical? I'm not entirely sure. Coming up on the interlock, and I'm gonna take a couple more pounds. Take a couple more pounds. Almost to a suppression. Got clear at Mansfield. about the first car on the, uh, the mini bike, right over, uh, I think this is Chauncey Street. Take a look. Well, not quite far enough. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, quite that, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so that one is off, and then that one's off, so I kind of, um, This is where a multiplayer would come into play because you have your conductor stand in the rear yeah. vestibule of the first car and he buzzes you when he's on the platform. The <laughs> it's like perfectly in half. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. That's fine. Whatever. But yeah, in real, and Mike's right, in real life you'd have somebody spotting you. Um, I, I likely should have stopped just at, like after the stairs or something. Yeah, whatever. It's not matter. Our passengers are off. We are on our way to Attleboro. This is probably the most interesting stuff. Because it's the only 80 mile an hour, not in the corridor, but like in this section. Because uh, you got an 80 mile an hour switch. It's uh, the only one between Providence and Boston. Only 80 mile an hour switch. Seven miles away. So, uh, any questions in the chat? Uh, okay. Yeah, if anybody has any questions, we got a little bit of downtime right now. We're cruising through Mansfield interlocking and accelerating back to 80 on our way to Attleboro. Love it, buddy. Keep calling the signals. The engineers the, the, uh, and whoever is riding in the, the second man seat, they usually kind of play a game. They'll call the signals back to each other. So when I got my ride recently in the Acela back in November, I'm calling like, clear at Orms. All right, clear at Orms. Clear at Pawtucket. Clear at Pawtucket. Slow approach to Tower One. Slow approach. Like, like, all that kind of stuff. So it's kind of like a little game that helps keep your mind engaged and helps reinforce whatever signal knowledge that uh, you got. So keep it up. You may have noticed that Mike and I have kind of been doing that back and forth throughout the stream. It's helping Brandon not nail down the Calling out signals. An idea of what interlocking you're at. Just 
so many interlocks between York and Trenton. You pass one and you're able to name it. And you sort of got an idea of where you are. Exactly, that's what I've been trying to do. And associating the mileposts as well to these locations helps me personally. Because then I know where I am at night times. So if I can spot a milepost and I know the milepost of all the other landmarks around that area, then I know where I am. Yeah, a lot of this is like, it's just like this in real life. Just dense forest. Nothing but it. Nothing around. And that's what's so cool about this route, is you can just go from Boston or Providence, which are sprawling city centers, to what just looks like the middle of nowhere in no time flat. Are there any spots in uh, Trenton that you feel the same about, Mike? Definitely. Coming out of New Brunswick, uh, once you get out of uh, New Brunswick proper and you pass New Jersey Avenue, that whole stretch between New Jersey Avenue and, and, and Ham Interlock, really, you're really just cutting through forests and stuff like that. There's really not much out there. There's like, you go through a few suburbs and things, but the right of way is completely entrenched in green. Really not much while you're in between Hamilton and the Jersey Avenue, except for two landmarks. It looks mostly like this, except for that. Yeah. Alright, so we're starting our, we're about to start our signal progression into uh, what's known as Holden interlocking. A lot of the, the street, uh, the interlockings are named after streets in this area. So, Holden interlocking is what we're coming up to you next. And you can see that we have a cab speed aspect. So the cabs are going to drop to 80. Those get cut out somehow. We'll cut them back in. But anyway, it, the reason for that, that's the distance signal for Holden interlocking. So the distance signal, if you've seen my signal guide, prepares you for how to approach the home signal ahead. So in this case, we're switching tracks at 80 miles per hour, so the distance signal prepares you to make that movement. Hence why we got the drop to 80. Now luckily, we're not an Amtrak train. Not like Amtrak would switch on this track anyway, but we, uh, because it's not electrified. But, um, we didn't have to slow down from our speed because we're limited to 80 anyway. So it's literally just acknowledging a cab signal. As simple as that. So now we're coming up on the actual home signal for Holden. Something interesting is gonna happen next at the exit. This is, this is very unique, I think. So we'll make our 80 mile an hour crossover eventually. The interlocking is kind of large. And then you immediately will hit an approach limit. So, first, let's um, apply with that. So the reason for that is, that is the distance signal for the next interlocking, right after Attleboro, where you switch back onto the main line. That interlocking is called Thatcher. So, you can kind of think of this as like, a little pocket track, or like a little side, almost, where you come in to stop for a uh, round. And that, of course, is a limited speed move, because uh, you got approach limited. Remember we were talking earlier about the freight? Um, I, I swear it's called the middle borrow subdivision, or Middleborough Secondary, or something. That's where that splits off right here at Middleborough. I, I can't find, I couldn't find the name. <laughs> I, I, oh, you've got like a Trek map. Thank you. Jesus. 
All right, so I'm gonna throw in a minimum reduction right here coming into uh, Attleboro. I'm gonna put a few more pounds on. Go into suppression. There's supposed to be a mini high yes. right here. I'm gonna pretend that there is. So we're just gonna pull a little bit past the mini high, graduate off. So, in real life, that would have hit the mini high. No yes, problem. no problem. Yeah. yeah, it's supposed to be a little small, high platform close to the carriers. No, I did think a lot of accidentally. Appreciate it though. So as you can see, and this is really, really pretty, and this is what I really like about Time of Day version 4. Sun's coming up, the sun is managing to find its way a little bit through the clouds. Even though it seems a bit unrealistic right now, I can't even see the damn sun. <laughs> but, um, I don't know. It's pretty. cool if this route gets modernized, you know, like, adds Ruggles Track 2 and the new Pawtucket yeah. station. That'd be cool. I don't see it happening. Mm -hmm. There'd be a lot of cool things that we don't see happening. A lot of stuff. Dream on. <laughs> dream on. Dream on. <laughs> dream until your dreams come true. So is putting brakes a minimal reduction if you have to put it down on the reduction after an approach? You're going to have to revise your question. Yeah, that's worded for uh -huh. I think he meant approach medium. medium. So what I'll answer to you, and by the way, limited clear at Thatcher. Um, the way I'll word it to you is whenever you have a cab signal reduction, like what we had back at Holden from MAS to 80. Uh, if you're going over the prescribed speed, in that case 80, you need to put the brakes into such a way, it's, it's a suppression application. So that equalizing reservoir that we talked about before, it's defaulting at 110 when the brakes are released. You need to bring that white needle over to 94 or lower and then acknowledge it or acknowledge it and move it you know like just get it just get it to that amount of break application um, what confuses a lot of people is you have the actual suppression notch on this break handle and it just completely it's almost like throwing the brakes into emergency it's ridiculous no just Reduce the brakes enough to get 94 on the equalizing reservoir, and you're good. You've done a suppression reduction. So that that's one point in my video that kind of confuses people, because I say whenever ATC downgrades, put it to suppression notch. So yeah, sorry. Yeah, Mike's Mike's typing right now to maybe help clarify things. Not the oh, what was the question? Okay. 
but uh, hopefully Mike satisfied uh, your curiosity. So we're coming up on South Attleboro in about two-ish miles. Coming up on Hebronville interlocking right now. This is the curve at Hebronville. Uh, looks like we have an outbound MBTA switching over to track four at Hebronville. We have a clear. And the weather has not let up, but I have not seen as much lightning as I would have liked. So for Amtrak, there's a cab signal downgrade progression around here. That block point we just passed would have dropped you to clear 125. And then this next one right at the station will drop you to cab speed 80. I'm going to start braking for this um, probably a bit late, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to full service. To graduate off of it. Power break? Yeah. I can never tell with the fucking hut. Um, that stop was fine. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it kind of sucks. The station is closed down right now. Are they rebuilding it? What are they doing? Yeah, so what I've heard is they're working on rebuilding it, but I haven't. I don't know. I haven't been up there recently. Maybe I'll take a trip soon. I wonder if it's coming back as a they should, They should try their best to bring the station back. Because as, as great as having the Pawtucket station is, this one is kind of important too. I've seen in like the early 2000s and mid 2000s, this station fucking packed. Mm. Packed. It gets a lot of service. Mostly by people that don't want to have to pay the uh, exorbitant parking costs for um, Providence, right? You know, if they're heading into uh, into Boston. I mean, that's what my dad did when I was a kid. He take me up into into Boston. We drive the extra few minutes from Providence and just go to South Attleboro. We parked there for, at the time, I think it was two bucks. Yeah. And it went up to, I think, four bucks. Obviously, no inflation. So from here on, I'm going to follow C speeds this is the only time that sea speeds actually matter coming into Providence.
in terms of traffic, probably between Hunter Interlocking and New York 10. Because you have the Rare and Valley Line trains coming in at Hunter, and then you have the uh, Midtown Direct train uh, off of the Morristown line that come in at Swift. So between Swift Interlocking and New York 10 Station, easily probably the highest traffic section of support. But the Metro North line between uh, New Rochelle and probably uh, Harrison or, or Rye would probably be a close second. Because uh, Metro North runs a lot of service as well. No, it's only just met the one line there versus the uh, two, three lines coming in on the corridor. Uh, between the yeah, so definitely not up here between New Haven and Boston. Oh, yeah, absolutely not. <laughs> Which is why the timetable here is, is more fleshed out than it is. Because you just have so much service that if you keep layering on additional trains, you sort of have to make sure everything's working before publishing it and then layering on additional trains on top of that. It's going to take a little bit of time before they get the timetable on New York Trenton up to a state where you see the majority of the trains that are actually but it's it's getting. I think they. I think what they started off with was pretty decent. Like, yeah, you could definitely have more trains during the rush hour, but it's it's also definitely not empty. I wouldn't say it's empty. It's more empty than we would perhaps like. Then again, you know, the community asks for a lot. To be expected. They do. They do. I mean, I feel like we're kind of part of the community too, to a point. It's it's tough. So yeah, this is where that new um, train station is for MBTA, Pawtucket Central Falls Station. Welcome edition. Oh, so I've got an approach limited coming up at Lawn. This is Lawn Interlocking, I believe, named after Oak Lawn Avenue. really cut my speed out there. Yeah. Coming into that 30 mile an hour. Oh wait, are you... Oh, you're not near problems. We gotta get past the door. Yeah, okay. so we're not at the layover yard yet. So this is Interstate 95 off to our left here. Right around mile post. 187, so roughly two miles or so from Providence. I always tell people I love driving by here on I-95 because you see the signals and sometimes catch a train, so it's always cool. Do you have any areas like that in New Jersey where you can drive like parallel to the the train tracks? Um. Anywhere on the northeast border, you can and there's... Well, I know in parts of Connecticut you can. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know about New Jersey. No, not in New Jersey. The border doesn't really follow the highway close. Like, it parallels 95, but it's not actually like the next one. The only place that it's like that is um, at Secaucus Junction. Uh, I-95 is on track level. Oh, right, right, level. right, okay. Right. But Other even then, that, further south, it's, it does Right. Nothing. Hey, Ryan King. Nice to see you again, buddy. Thanks for joining the stream. Oh, right. Now, 
yeah, sort of, but it's not at grade level, so you can't actually really see the train all that well. And there's also a lot of, like, foliage uh, in, in the right of way, and you know, down, down, down in that area. Got an approach signal, I can tuck it. Yes, I-280 follows the m &E, um, but also remember that I-280 is in a cut, and the M&E is elevated, so there are going to be portions where you can afford to see the train, um, but then also portions where you can't, and the train, the track speed there is is relatively low uh, con uh, compared to like what you can be doing on the highway, so it's not, you're not really going to be pacing there right? but it's definitely cool, I know what you're talking about, I use that to get into New York all the time, right? my house, I get on I-280 and I drive towards the long tunnel if I go to downtown definitely know what you're talking about there. Oh, that reminds me, um, Newark Broad Street uh, is on the other side of I-280. Because I-280 after the, uh, I think the exit one that takes you down into downtown Newark, it goes, it goes over the corridor, or not the corridor, over the M&E, and then you end up on the other side of, of the, the railroad tracks. And you're at grade level at Broad Street, the train's coming in to stop there, and then also uh, going over the drawbridge, uh, the river there. So yeah, definitely a couple of good spots on the enemy where the where the highway parallels the right away. But I think on the northeast border, there's really no such location other than. Yeah, so it seems pretty rare. I'm trying to think of any of the other lines. If there's any other. Uh, section of New Jersey where you can sort of, there's a good stretch of road. I know if you go west of Dover, um, into Wharton, there's, uh, there's a stretch of road that parallels the right of way for actually a pretty good clip, uh, just before Lake Junction and, uh, Mount Arlington. I've shot, uh, diesels there a couple of times. That's a pretty nice spot. Alright, so we're coming into Providence. I have a medium approach at Orms. I'm already going medium speed, so I'm not going to worry about it. So that tells me that I'm going to be switching to either tracks 3 or 5. Medium approach is a diverging signal. So typically when you receive medium approach, you should expect to stop at the next signal and be switching tracks. So it's different from approach in that respect. So we did get switched over to track three. Whoa, that lit up like a Christmas tree. Yeah. <laughs> oh, finally out of the rain. Finally out of the rain. I'm gonna try to be a good boy and pull uh, under the vents. good of a boy I was. <laughs> I think the vents are more like right here. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll clog up Providence with some smog.
But yeah, that is, um, that's my run from Boston to Providence, MBTA, Providence Line, pretty much all stops. Minus that crash at Canton Junction. <laughs> Please don't hold that against me. <laughs> awesome. Let's, uh, let's take a few minute break. Uh, Mike, was there anything else you wanted to show off? I think the, um, the yeah. wheel slip demonstration. So, yeah, so I think we're going to take a look at the wheel slip stuff on the ALP46. And then I'll just run a couple stops with that. And then I wanted to run in a cell down the corridor or something. All right. So, so we'll let Mike finish it off with his demonstrations. I think I'm done uh, for now. So he's gotten most of the spotlight. <laughs> this was a rather short trip for me overall. But that's fine. Mike is our special guest. So yeah, let's uh, let's take a couple minute break. Everybody... Get up, use the restroom, grab a drink, do some push-ups, whatever you got to do, <laughs> and uh, we'll reconvene in a few minutes. All right, guys?
All right, guys, we are back. So we've gotten up, we've walked around, we've gotten some refreshments, we've used yeah. the restroom, and we are ready to go. All right, so as you can see, I have selected a Jersey Avenue run because I just want to start outside and be on the corridor without having to go through all that stuff between 10 and 6 o'clock or something. We're going to load up in 3736. Uh, I've set the time of year to the coldest it can possibly be, which is either December 31st or January 1st. And I've set snow level to the maximum, uh, so there's going to be ice on the tracks and stuff. And then cloud level, I'm going to keep around half. So we'll start there. Uh, Brandon is back on the chat, so if you see Fan Railer replying to you, that's Brandon. I'm sitting at the keyboard to control the train. That's right. <laughs> Oh, look oh, at this sky. It's gorgeous. Beautiful. All right, so we'll cut in alerter and safety systems. We're going to open the right doors. Where's the habit? Eight cars right now. Yep. Cars. Uh, brakes. A lap. Charge them up. Engine lights on. Um. Turn the cab heat on. Yeah. Shield heater. I always do that too, even though it has no effect. <laughs> yeah, it's just the, you know, extra sense of realism there. Reverse or forward. Uh, we're going to conduct our class 2 brake test. So, I can actually simulate the buzzes this time. Pound reduction. Please. Another twenty pound reduction. And last two. Complete. Oh, that's cool. This time we have a slow clear at county. Remember the last time we operated this, we had a slow approach. So I wonder what. I wonder I guess what we'll find out. Be. Yeah, I know. This is good for you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, close down. Who to go? Brakes, bell on, take a notch of power. Black run out. Perfect. Come up to about half throttle. Really no reason to go any higher than that until we're out of the yard. Come up to 10 miles an hour. Gonna shut the throttle off to our rolling brake test. 12 pound. Train is slowing down. Go to hold. Verify hold works and release. Good running brake test. Roger, Roger. NJ Rail 3736. Good running brake. So Shrops asks, does the EP? Switch do anything on this locomotive? Yes, it does. So if you cut the EP out, then you're running with manual lap direct release brakes, which I will not do because it is pulled out and I don't want to run past the station. But yeah, so like I mentioned uh, a long time ago earlier in the stream, um, if you run with the EP brakes cut out, uh, you, when you go into hold, you're basically going into release. Um, and you can't graduate the brakes if EP is cut out. So as soon as you go into release, you have to release all of your brake application and then reapply the brake. So you basically have to try again if you release the brakes in a direct release. So you can't graduate off a direct release brake. That's the whole difference between direct release and graduate. It's either one or the other. Is it on by default in this locomotive? Yes, it's on. It's on the cab car and the locomotive. It is on by default in the game. 
real life obviously isn't. Okay, so we are coming out of the yard. Um, I'm not going to slip the wheels over the interlocking because that would be in poor taste. But uh, once we get out of county interlocking, get the engine out of county interlocking, I'll gun the throttle. And what, what I want you guys to check out are the two uh, traction bars here. So what this is showing you, I don't know if you can really see it, but each... Uh, truck has its individual inverter control so if the front truck slips then both that means both axles on the front truck are slipping um, and same thing for uh, the rear truck on truck number two so now that we are on the straightaway through the switches I'm gonna go to 10 and you can see the uh, wheel slip happen sort of it works a little bit better actually at low speed so you might not be able to see it right now um, uh, very well, but as you can see here, the truck number two is is slipping more than truck number one, so you have slightly less tractive effort from truck number two. And you also have that really annoying squealing sound, which the locomotive does make in real life. It's actually worse. But yeah, so I'll come back down because there's really no point to show you the wheel slip until we're actually coming out of New Brunswick. You actually see the oscillations like truck one will slip and then truck two will slip and then it'll regain truck one will regain traction truck two will regain traction whatever so all right before i lose track of where i am we pass those automatics so i'm going to take brake application and i'm going to actually bail off the engine brakes just a little bit so i don't slip the engine these weather conditions you're less likely to dive bomb a station in like, like like you do in dry conditions oh yeah i i would definitely come to a station a lot more cautiously than i would um you know if the rail conditions were favorable and there's plenty of schedule padding to allow me to operate a lot more cautiously anyway so there's really no reason for me to be uh, reckless with these station stops if I don't have to be. What's up? Uh, so yeah, so when you get out of the cab and you load back into the cab, the bars all spawn in like Oh, yeah, yeah. Are you trying to, like, reset them? Well, you can- I can reset the brakes. I can't reset the traction until I actually take power. Oh, okay. I can reset the brakes because I forgot to put my brake pressure- uh, uh, brake cylinder pressure up to 25 earlier. Oh. So I'll just- Um, yeah, I'm impatient, so we're just gonna go. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah. You're the one that told me. Yeah, you still get trick. the points. As long as the, um, as long as the yellow loading bar, uh, completely fills up the circle, even if you close down early and leave, you still get the points for making the zone. Um, so, alright, so keep an eye on the traction bars here. I'm gonna come up nice and easy. So they've reset there. So now I'm gonna go to full power and watch them start to slip. So that is the locomotive actually trying to um, arrest the wheel slippage. And you can see it's sort of like oscillating because the two trucks are slipping independently of each other. So the locomotive is trying to control um, slippage from each truck independently. I haven't actually seen it like that before. That's really cool. And also, when it's slipping, you'll see the sander light is coming on. So I'll shut the throttle off. It'll stop slipping. The sand light comes off. Uh, you can see it's uh, the left button underneath uh, end door is closed. Uh, if I slip, the sand light comes on.
Yep. Yeah. So that was the automatic sanding. Yep, you that's were the automatic about. sanding I was talking about earlier. Yeah. Now, you also told me that it doesn't have very much effect. Yeah, no, it, even in real life the sand doesn't really do a whole lot on these locomotives. These locomotives when they when they start to slip you're going to be spinning unless you back off the throttle. Uh, a lot of guys, uh, if they're good, they'll back off the throttle uh, or they'll just hit the sand, right? Especially if you're from the cab car. But uh, operating from the locomotive where you can actually feel it slipping and hear it slipping, I think a lot of guys are probably a little bit more uh, conservative when they're running from the locomotive. At least that's what I've noticed. So Noah's asking a good question. Is the wheel slip light supposed to come on too? Yes, it is supposed to come on. So I'm not sure why it's not coming on. Um, that's probably just something that slipped through the development team's uh, bug catching net. Uh, so definitely, if you guys want to go in and bug that, tell them, oh, the wheel slip light is not coming on. Uh, go ahead and do that. It should be a solid red light. I'm going to shut off a little early and take a 12 pound reduction here. And that's only because of the, the track conditions. Yes. Come in nice and easy, Ned. We're still going to be early anyway because you know, we're due in at 7.01 or uh, uh, you know, 5.01 p.m. And it's only... 459 right now. Yeah, so we got some time to play with. Yeah. Not a hold. Graduate off. I'm gonna pull about 20 yards or so past the end of the platform. At least that's what I want to do. And that should position the whole train on the platform. And that's like what, one car length? Yeah, it's one locomotive length. So pretty much the front of the loco is at the beginning of that capital. Yes. Give or take. Yeah. Perfect. That's how we did. That's just fine to me. Perfect. Okay, so, uh, I'm gonna channel my inner Brandon the hut off here. <laughs> we're gonna make Metuchen and Metro Park oh come on Mike do you feel no, no you're not pressured no you got this man even with the even with the track conditions being like this I'm not worried hell yeah I actually will turn this back on though for a second oh you know what I can just close down and go Mike is as good in this territory as I am with Boston so nobody have any Flip yet? There we go. There's this. Yeah. Back off the throttle until it until it stops spinning. And the automatic sander's going, and it's doing nothing, man. But you said that's accurate to real life, right? Pretty much. Yeah. That's kind of a shame, because in the Acela, the sand actually works wonders. In real life? Yeah. Yeah. In real life. Yeah, so we had some nasty sand, uh, some nasty, sorry, wheel slip, leaving um, Route 128, and uh, my engineer applied sand right there, and it cleared right up. But I don't know what the difference is here. I, I mean, I know that these locos are, uh, they're quite a bit lighter than the Acela power cars, right? They're actually about the same uh, weight-wise, but the locomotives put down a lot more tractive effort than the Acela power cars do. 
wonder why that is. Because you got two. You got two Acela power cards. You don't need... No, no, no. I mean, it, the Acela... You got two I'm Acela... guessing I don't understand. You got two Acela power cards per train set. Yeah. Uh, and you got, only got one locomotive on each one of these trains. So right. you're going to need a lot more starting power out of one unit, whereas you can split that starting power up oh, between two right. units. And then get less wheels. On a much like shorter oh, train. Oh, okay. Yeah. I understand that. Yeah. still a shame, though, that the sand doesn't do as much. Yeah, it doesn't do as much as you think it would. You could also pretend that this locomotive is out of sand, because I know we were talking about that earlier. We were. A lot of ALP-46 locomotives, because they're always using the sander, and they don't always visit the maintenance shops as often as they might, or they should, a lot of these locomotives are running around New Jersey Transit with no sand. So yeah, the sander comes on, but it's just spitting out air. Like there's not actually sand coming out because the locomotive is just out of sand. Right. Yeah, uh, we were looking it up earlier. And what is it? Uh, it's 778 pounds per sandbox, and there's four sandboxes on each one. So about it was. What did we say? Like 3,000 pounds, pounds of sand, sand, fully loaded. Which is a ridiculous amount. How much sand comes out when you press the button? Like I don't even know. I'm estimating you probably have enough sand for about an hour continuous of just holding the sander down. How does it run out then? Because it's always on. Oh, jeez. That, that just points to a big flaw in the locomotive. Shut that off. Alright, so we're coming up on Metuchen. This is where I usually start breaking, so I'm going to take 12 pounds here. should be good. And if you heard that train, by the way, that was Amtrak 179 heading west. Said, uh, they also have no wiper fluid. Oh. In, in addition to no sand. <laughs> Is that true? I don't know. I, I'm not familiar with the wipers on the ALP 46. That doesn't really. I believe it. Yeah. There's a lot wrong with the way Transit runs their equipment. I believe you. Keeping it, it maintained. <laughs> I believe you, Shrubs. That's fucking fun. Spot next to this pole here. Nice and easy to graduate off. And yeah, see, I gotta get better with that shit, man. He's so much cleaner with the brakes than I am. Look, Ma, no HUD. All doors are Oh, the look at that last door. That last door is just on. That's perfect. Zoom in on that last door. Oh, uh, that is beautiful. That's no like a HUD, baby. and a half. Metro Park's going to be light work because it's a long platform. Yeah. Uh, where are we here? Uh, okay, close down. Shrop says that they use water bottles to fill the uh, <laughs> reservoir sometimes, the wiper fluid. <laughs> I believe it. Hey, what's going I on? I believe it. CT Trains and Aviation, thanks for joining, buddy. Appreciate hey, dude. You. Always good to see you here, man. Oop, too much. Here we go. Yeah, I'm doing good, buddy. How are you? Gosh. Metro Park Raw. Oh, this is actually a local train. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. yeah. On 67, 67, yeah, pretty late. Yeah, it is a late ass train. 10:45, we gotta be there. Yeah. So, 
I'm a I'm a early to bed, early to rise kind of guy. I'm sure you've heard the saying. So staying up late to drive my friend to the train station. It um it's abnormal for me. But I'll do it. It's all good. I just gotta be um properly rested. And I am, I feel pretty good right now. Stop spinning. Stop spinning. There we go. You're getting wheel slip all the way up until that point? Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, running running trains in this kind of adhesion, you really sort of just have to play with it and see how much power you can apply uh, while, you know, still holding the rails. And as soon as you start slipping, just back off the throttle one notch, wait a couple miles per hour, uh, and then just try again. You don't see too much. Back yeah, yeah, off. yeah. No, I forget it was yeah. like... That was the Menlo just Uh, yes. Yeah, because this is curve number one for Menlo, and then you got the reverse curve where I'm going to take a break application. And then at Menlo home signals, I'm going to take an additional bite of air there, we'll come in on my... Alright, there is the Menlo home signals, I'm going to go coast, take a 10 pound bite of air there, and then on the, at the west, east end of Menlo, we're going to take another 5 pounds here. Let us come in nicely. A little bit more conservative than you would if the weather was completely clear. Yeah. But it's it's totally understandable. These conditions, you you don't want to bite off more than you can chew and slide off the end of the platform. Sure. Graduate off. I'm gonna look for that E sign. Side. Oh yeah, I see it up there. See it? Yeah, I do. Oh, I see it. Yeah, just by that guy. Alright. Or that one. Apply full service. Yeah, you're good. I've got an honest question for you about rails and track conditions. Is there such thing as black ice on the rails? Uh you know like on the road, like there's black yeah, ice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um that wasn't um, a stop. Yeah, I don't see why there wouldn't be. I mean... Like, like, think of a flash freeze. Yeah. And then a train encounters it. The thing with, the thing with ice on rails, though, is... This is just purely my conjecture. Is that because train weights are so high and you're transmitting such... A high amount of force into such a small contact area because you got to remember a train wheel the, the area that contacts the rails is about the size of like a dime there's so much force there that i feel like if it's rolling over any ice it's just going to crush the ice and push it out of the way okay that being said if you are a powered axle and you're trying to get traction on that ice yeah it's still going to spin it's still going to slip and if you're trying to break on that ice you're still going to slip yeah, yeah but it's not it's it's not exactly the same because in that process you are also breaking up breaking the ice it and up pushing it off because the there's so much downward force yes. like hundreds of thousands of pounds potentially yeah yeah okay that makes sense whereas a car is just a couple tons yeah and a car you know, rubber tire you got to remember the rubber tire deflate not deflates a little but it deforms a little bit where the tire meets the road so right. that you get more of a contact it's surface area it's not a rigid surface yeah. like a so the force is spread wheel. out over the say i guess maybe like half a foot of rubber that's making contact with the pavement yeah. so you're not going to break up the ice as much in that scenario got it uh, okay we can close down here no that's just something i was always curious of down here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually go into free camera mode okay and we're
we're gonna squeal our way out of the station. Oh yeah. So pay attention to the sound. This was something that he pointed out to me earlier. So um, I'll be quiet. Yeah, so that is our demonstration of the wheel slip control system on the ALP-46. I hope that was informative. Yeah, that's a good demonstration. Because I wasn't aware that it compensated for wheel slip. Yeah. Kind of like the Acela does. Yeah. But um, I wasn't aware that the sanders came on automatically, even though they don't do jack shit. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Does anybody have any follow-up questions before Mike hops into, into his yeah. um, Acela run that he wants to do? We'll give uh, we'll give people a moment. Um, Mike, wh what service did you want to do? I don't know. Uh, every service I've done so far, I've stopped at Metro Park, so I'm open to running a service that doesn't stop at Metro Park. Okay. You want to start from Penn, or you want to go right into the... Uh, the high-speed section? The fly zone? Oh, I think we could start. We uh, Last stream you did, I think you started from Trenton, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so why don't we start from Penn today? Okay. Let's do... Uh, does this... This doesn't stop at... We can do... How early can I go without stopping at... Twenty one fifty one is the earliest we can do without stopping at Metro Park, but we could still probably see some of the um the the end the tail end of rush hour service coming into Penn Station. Mm -hmm. So I'll pick this service here. Twenty one fifty one. Yeah, twenty one fifty one. All right. That's the um that's the first one that leaves Boston in the morning. So that one leaves at about five in the morning. Hits my house at, well, not hits my house, but goes by my house at <laughs> about 5.50 every morning. So if I don't wake up at 5, which is where I set my alarm, 21.51 is what makes wakes me the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, level about a little over half. Uh, we'll keep the snow to a... Here. <laughs> it doesn't hit my house, Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> if it hit my house, I'd be homeless and I'd be living with somebody nearby. I'll run no snow. But um, yeah, the bastard. It, yeah, it comes by regularly. Same thing with the MBTA. They're going by right now. I don't know if you guys could pick that up. Probably. Oh yeah, that's, that's loud. Yeah. The the HSPs have such a bassy quality to them because they have the GE engines. I love them. I think that was that one was switching back to 2. All right. Left door is open. <laughs> yeah, the train is basically a an alarm for me. But I don't know, you kind of get desensitized to it. Like it d Anybody here ever live near an airport? My mom grew up living near an airport. Um, TF Green Airport here in Rhode Island. And she told me that after a while, you just get used to the, the sound. And I was like, you know, you're crazy, Mom. You're, you're batshit crazy. Now I understand. All right, so I've uh, turned all the heating systems on. Because it's cold out. And, um... Uh, make sure tilt is armed. 
I've set the cruise to 14 miles an hour. Uh, we'll leave the headlights the way they are for now. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to show you guys a trick that I use uh, when I'm running the public build because of all the signal issues. Ooh, a trick. So in Penn Station, what I do is I'm going to cut the ATC in. Cut the alerter in, too, because why not? Oh, you're going to keep so we'll access. access out. And then once we get going, cause, because there's no access in Penn Station, once we get going, once we get in past uh, A interlocking and into the portal at the North River tubes, I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut to toggle the uh, safety systems. Because if you use the keyboard shortcut to toggle the safety systems, it controls both the ATC and access. So if you have one on but the other off, when you use the keyboard shortcut, it basically swaps what's on and what's off. So I'll shut the ATC off but turn access on when we get into the tunnel so I don't have these uh, ridiculous cab drops where I, you know... No shit. Where I shouldn't. So it's, it's a cool it's a cool trick to, to use if you know what you're doing. Oh my god, I didn't even yeah. realize that. That's what I've been doing at home. It works coming the other way too, so when I come out of Trenton, um, I'll, I'll run with the access on but the ATC off. But then once I get into Penn Station where there's no access, I just use the keyboard shortcut to toggle ATC on and access off. So instead of having a zero curve on access, I have the 20 mile an hour curve uh, that ATC is given. Yeah. All right. Two to go. Uh, we are clear to Newark. I'm sure you guys just heard an Acela Express go by. That would be Acela Express number 2168. It looks like 2168. Absolutely. Blowing by my house at 150 miles an hour on track number two. So Noah brought something up to me recently about these signals. So Penn Station, it's non-cab signal territory, right? Yeah. So what he said was that these green over red signals, well, while it, green over red is clear, like it's still clear, even though you're moving at 15 miles an hour. Does that make sense? Yeah. So... Um, I always thought it was slow clear because of the 15 mile an hour restriction within Penn Station. So I thought green over red, slow clear within Penn Station, yellow over red, slow approach within Penn Station, and then stop and restricting, obviously. Um, what's your take on that, considering it's not cab signal territory? Does it, does it matter the distinction between clear and slow clear at that point? I mean, I'm not. I, I'm the last person you should be asking about signals. That is not where I'm qualified. Uh, so I'm gonna defer. Yeah, it to was that just question. an inter it was an interesting thing that he brought up yeah. to me. I never even thought of it before. I'm gonna defer that question to someone who's actually qualified. I just figured I'd ask. All right, so coming out of the uh, uh, A interlocking here. Oh, I'm getting wheel slip. Should be good. Yeah, I got some wheel slip. It's bizarre, because you're going downhill into the fucking Hudson River. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I'll let the power cars take care of it themselves. Um... Yeah, so what I usually do is I set the cruise to 58 because the cruise takes a little bit of time to transition between dynamic brake uh, and throttle. So to prevent myself from overspeeding, I'll set the cruise to 58, let the train come up, it brakes a little bit, and then you set it to 60. So that way... Oh, that's crazy. Overspeed. I didn't even know that that was a thing. I still did some a little bit overspeed because I lost some points there, but that's fine. Shut the hut off. 
Yeah. There we go. There we go, buddy. We, we got it from here. You got two experts behind the wheel. I, I'm a backseat driver. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so you said you got ATC cut out good. Yes. Yeah, because you're going to get some, some wacky. wonky cab drops, yeah. Yeah. And there shouldn't be anything... I'm going to sell it, so they shouldn't be putting anything in front of me, so I should have... I should have clears all the way through, except for where you can't get clears. And the thing is, you know the territory. Oh, yeah. You know, like, what's in front of you. You know... What up. you're going to get yeah. if something is in front of you. Yeah. So if something in the game is inaccurate, you just cut the systems out and you do the right thing. It's a shame that it has to be that way. Hopefully it won't have to be that way for too much longer. Yeah. Yeah, Noah's kind of reinforcing our signal conversation in Penn Station back there about, like, clear versus slow clear and approach versus slow approach. He's like, to be fair, it's just a question of terminology. As long as everything is slow speed in New York, the terminology doesn't really matter. Which, which I agree. And I, I explained that to you, Noah, recently when we spoke. Um that because slow speed is 15 miles an hour and everything in Penn Station is slow speed, I just find it easier to just minimize everything, or, you know, just make it all slow clear, slow approach, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, clear at Bergen. Roger, clear track. Bergen. Track three. There, you call it. Clear track three allied. Clear track three allied. It's crazy to me how the interlockings are just so, like, Close together, like back to down. back to back around here. Do you know of any history behind that? Not really. Clear three track Erie. Clear track three at Erie. Does anybody in the chat know any history behind why there's so many interlockings back to back to back? You got fucking Bergen, then Allied, then Erie, then Lack, then Portal. Clear three, Lackawanna. You call it Lackawanna, huh? Nah, it's not Lackawanna, but... I mean, it was named after that. Yeah, that's what yeah. it was named after. Anyway, clear track three at Lack. Good shit. That's what that's what like a fucking boomer would call it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I should break. Uh yeah, you should at that. <laughs> How old are you, Mike? Uh twenty nine. Twenty nine, and I'm thirty. So both millennials, we're not boomers. Yeah, we sometimes might talk like boomers. Um, Noah says that Portal was the only original interlocking in this area after Hudson under the Pennsylvania Railroad. So I guess Lack, Erie, Allied, and Bergen were added after. Yeah, because remember, Secaucus Junction used to not be there. Okay. That's all new, as of like around the year 2000 is when they built it. So, uh, Lack, Allied, Erie, I would assume, were added with Secaucus. I don't know if Bergen was. That's crazy, though. Like, one station could warrant the addition of at least three other interlockings? Actually, that's ridiculous. It seems ridiculous. Little bit more controlled here. 
Oh yeah, you're fine. Yeah, I'm actually falling and breaking curve this time. Yeah, you're good. That's perfect. Give me my headlights. In the famous words of Mr. Habakkuk in uh, Caddyshack, that's a peach, hon. <laughs> <laughs> anybody's seen Caddyshack. Clear, track three, Hudson. Clear. Hudson, track three. So this is a weird spot, right? Because the milepost change from the, um, the New York, was it the New York, um, to Penn State? Uh, shit. How do I word this? There's like a different milepost designation at this point. Is there? Yeah, there is. So like you have the milepost from Jersey City to this point, and then the milepost from Penn Station to this point, and then they switch to a different milepost numbering system. Yeah, it's very fucking weird. So if anybody gets hung up on the mileposts in this area, like, this wasn't a mile, and you see, like, weird numbers on the milepost, that's why. They changed the designations from measuring from Jersey City to measuring from Penn Station or vice versa. I can't remember. Is it Jersey City? Okay. Thank you, Shrubs. Um, medium clear. You're going to want to be going 30. It's all good. It's not conforming, though. It's weird. No, it's not conforming. Not even close. Just know that that's a medium speed yeah. switch. Yeah. Well, I'm not going over it. I'm going on to track three. Wait, well, I should be what? Good for, uh, yeah, I should be good for 45. Then why did you have medium clear? I don't know. The signals are all warped. Right? Oh, I'll have to take a look at that signal. Yeah, yeah see, I got a clear there. So. I don't... You should have had 45. And you're not switching. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Coming straight in onto track three at Newark. No, the, the, um, the track speed was set wrong there or something yeah. for that signal. The path speed. Mm. And I can fix that. Yeah. Oh, God. Max is asking the uh, the real question. Do you like the Boston or the Trenton route better? <laughs> <laughs> Who is he asking? That's that, important. Yo, that's a loaded fucking question. <laughs> <laughs> that's really important. Who are you asking? That's a, He's asking both of us. That's a loaded fucking question. Oh, man. I, I don't know, man. That's a hard hard question to answer because, like... It's been a long uh, layover. Yeah. <laughs> I, gotta, I definitely have a bias for... New York to Trenton because that's my home route and I've been waiting for to run the Acela on this ever since I knew this was coming out but um definitely Boston is in terms of just the quality you just can't beat it so that's your answer uh yeah definitely if you ask me in terms of like quality of route and like the signals and like just the fidelity of, of uh, operations and stuff like that I would have to definitely say Boston takes the cake there, but in terms of territory and variety of, uh, I guess, operating characteristics over the course of the route, I would have to say Trent. I absolutely agree with Mike's assessment, and he was extremely generous about giving as much praise about Boston that he did. I really appreciate that man so um credit where it's due man i appreciate that absolutely a lot of work went into boston and a lot of work went into trenton but at the end of the day the signal uh, the, the track on so let's compare every every component the track on boston the track on trenton um the tr I, I give both like a nine out of ten 
You know, like there's obviously going to be pitfalls here and there. A couple issues here and there. Track is not even a factor. Signals, I got a bias towards. Because I, I personally did the signals for Boston. So... I don't think there's any remaining issues with Boston. I mean, I know there's a, se a couple that I haven't shared with you. But, um... No, for the most part, I think it's good. But for this route, for Trenton, it's, it's obvious. There's some glaring signal issues. Timetable, I think both, both fail equally. Yes, the timetable for Boston is fully representative of what you would see... However, the trains get stuck all the fucking time, <laughs> and um, they they do weird shit. It's just it's it's just weird. This one is just incomplete. So because it's so incomplete, you don't have an opportunity to see the weirdness, because there's nothing going on. You can't you can't see the weirdness. Yeah, there's not enough trains running around for stuff to get stuck. It's like the same thing on Harlem, where, where there's so many trains, because the schedule is pretty much representative of, of a weekday service uh, on the Harlem line, that if something hangs up, uh, it just throws the whole thing out of whack, and you got like 10 trains piled up coming into White Plains and whatever. I've seen it happen a couple times, so. All right, uh, Amtrak 2151, Highball, Newark, Penn Station. Shit. Clear at West Dock. But yeah, all in all, um, just just like Mike said, he, he he's biased towards Trenton, and that's his that's his home territory. I totally agree. Um, I'm biased towards Boston because not only did I create it, but I live like 20 minutes south of Providence, so it, it's a loaded question. But we were happy to uh, indulge you. That was a hell of a question, right? Yeah, it was interesting. <laughs> You'd think it'd be an easy uh, Boston or, you know, New York Trenton, but it's really not. It's There's not. so many different factors um, that really go into what makes a route better than a different route. And you can't really compare... You gotta be careful about comparing apples to oranges, because I think that's a mistake that a lot of people make, um, is they try to say, like, oh, this route is so much better than this other route, but then you're you're taking, like, a short line versus, like, a 30-mile main line. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's not, the, it's really not the same. It's like, it's like me trying to compare, uh... I don't know, like the Strasbourg Railroad to the Reading and Northern. Like the Reading and Northern is a full size, I believe they're a class three, and they've got like dozens on dozens of miles of track uh, where they run revenue freight service. Whereas, you know, Strasbourg is a five mile short line that has mostly tourist operations, even though they do have a, a, a growing freight sector as part of their business as well. So it's like you can't really compare the two just because both of them have steam ops on them like it's not the same so that's something you just got to be careful about when you're saying is this better than something else make sure you're comparing the same thing yeah i think they more mean like quality yeah okay well yeah of course um of the releases but... not like not like oh is this route in real life right. better than Boston in real right, life, right. that sort of thing. Right, but then that's where also you have to consider, like, a, you know, if you're trying to compare a short line route that comes out versus something like this that comes out, yeah, it's not going to be as much content that they need to work on, so they can make the quality of that content a lot better. Sure. Um, that's, you know, that goes into really sort of looking at, oh, why was this route even possible? And we've said it before on previous streams, where they basically did take the original section of New Rochelle to the airport here, and they reused the section from Sunnyside Yard to here. So everything between Lane Interlocking and New York Penn Station and Sunnyside, that's all recycled content. So you're going to see a, issues back there. You're going to see uh, you know, signal problems and, and track geometry problems at certain places. Sure. And 
that's not something that you could fairly compare to Boston, which was, you know, hand laid um, from scratch. You know, it, there weren't the time, there weren't the same time constraints on that route that you would say were present on this route. So you have to keep that in mind when making that comparison. Yeah, that's true. Absolutely. All right, so we're going to get our force drop to 45 here. We are. I'm going to come down on the cruise control to actually to 80. Yeah, do 80 and then go to suppression. And then suppression here. Yep, absolutely. Um, That's a good call. And then what I'm going to do is when I hit the clear uh, at the next set of signals, which will be the Elmore distance signals, I'll kick the brakes off and kick the throttle off and back on really quick so we can sort of try to get back up to speed going through Almora. Oh, I forgot to. I'm gonna shut the throttle off here. Go to there. I saw some buffs on the parking deck. Did you put? If you want, I can add people on the top. <laughs> Dude, I got the editor. I can add whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm not gonna abuse my editor powers. But um, I'm sure they wouldn't mind me adding rail fans on the top of the. Yeah. Um, do they have a model? Like someone holding a camera? Uh, no, not that. <laughs> but no, just they just have a normal person. I can just throw a normal person on the top. be an interesting submission note. Yeah. Added rail fans to the top of the parking deck at a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> NYT <laughs> scenery. <laughs> Foamers. Added degenerates to the top. Of the <laughs> hey, as long as you're not adding furries up there. No I furries. Hmm. Uh... Oh yeah, Landers well, right. Don't they have um, rail fan models with cameras at Horseshoe Curve in the game? On TSW? I don't know if they do. I don't have Horseshoe Curve, so I don't know. I haven't actually played it, but I I, I think I heard it. Somewhere. I vaguely yeah, I vaguely remember seeing screenshots that have people holding cameras at Horseshoe Curve. Yeah, they're, I, they're I, saying I they remember. do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's nuts. Well, actually, it's not, it's not too unbelievable. I no, mean, yeah, it's a common a, tourist yeah. spot, right? It's for sure. Yeah. Why would you go there and not have a camera? Uh, Linden. Good old Linden. Hmm. This is the station that I fuck up the most. I don't know why. I know it's between Elizabeth and Rowley. Rowley. <laughs> why do you say that? Because it's wrong. It's spelt wrong on the map. It's so funny, though. <laughs> Rowway, guys. How do you say it? It's Rowway. Rowway. Do some ASMR. Rowway. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I got to be ready to come down to 110 at uh, Union. I'm going to type it in the chat. Yeah. Rowway. R-U-H-W-A-Y? All right, so I'm going to cut the cruise control back here to uh, 110. So, um, I forget the speeds around here. All right, so 110 at Union, and then I believe uh, you stay at 110 until the reverse curves at, at Metro Park, just past Metro Park. Um, um, but aren't the, um, the Lincoln curves 95? Yeah, but that we're not there yet. Well, I know that. Um, yeah, but yes, the Lincoln curves are 95. Yeah, that's like 
eight miles away, right? Yeah. So coming through here, you're good for 110 until you're past the first curve after Metro Park, and then you have a 105 curve that you have to break for if you're not stopping. And then it goes back to 110 through Lincoln, and then it comes down to 95 for the first curve uh, west of Lincoln, and then it goes back to so 110, to learn. and then it goes up to 125 uh, when you get to Edison. Got a lot to learn, guys. Yeah. I'm still learning my physical characteristics, but I'm getting better. I like this area more now. I'm not as angry as I was before. <laughs> I remember that first. Time. I was drunk. Uh, <laughs> Dude. I can tell. I can tell. Toward the end, I was drunk and tired. Yeah. Holy shit. Your cab car performance left a lot to be. Oh, yeah. No, but it was enjoyable. Like, for the viewers. <laughs> not so much for me. Not so much for me either. I was, like, screaming at you. Oh, I know you, but... <laughs> to let the brakes do their thing. I think that's why he's here. School me. <laughs> it could be. If I really wanted to, we would have loaded up in the cab car. No, oh my god. I don't want to have to claim PTSD to the, uh, to the VA. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Uh, clear track three, Island. Oh yeah. Clear it, Island. So this is where you're getting off tomorrow morning, right? Yep. Whoa. Oh, that bugged out for a second. Did you see that? Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. Again, I'm running this in DX12. At least I think I am. I don't think I removed that flag. Clear three, Menlo. Clear at Menlo. All right, so Menlo West is where I'm going to come down to 105 on the cruise control. is that that next curve right here is 105 is it yeah oh shit it's counting you down okay yeah 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 okay is it 110 on the opposite track uh 105 i think it's also 105 okay all right you should go back to 110 here yeah yeah okay Derek says that he's biased about Trenton being better just because he's from New Jersey. He says Boston's also a good route, so thank you for hey, that. That is fair. That is fair. Not the interlocking, but... <laughs> <laughs> uh, clear track three, Lincoln. Clear it, Lincoln. All right, so after the platform's at Metouch, and I'm going to bring the cruise control down to 95, the curves. That's right. West of Lincoln. I might still have to take a minimum break if the access curve starts to creep up on me, which it actually is. Wait a minute. You didn't touch the fucking mouse. How did you How'd you do the, um, uh -huh. the cruise control? Oh. Ha! <laughs> uh, R and F. Are you kidding? He knows all the fucking... Keyboard shortcuts. R and F. R and S. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm I'm dragging the control with my mouse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dragging it with my fucking mouse. Oh my god. I think you might have had a a, a glass too much there, Brandon. No, but. <laughs> oh. Right. Stop it. I'm the one driving you back to Kingston today. <laughs> I know. Uh, pray for me, guys. No, he's fine. <laughs> no, it's just... He knows all these keyboard shortcuts. You never asked. I would have told you. Oh, my God. I know the keyboard shortcuts for most of the controls. At least the important controls. Uh, I believe... In, definitely believe you now. R and F. So, R to increase, F to be. Un Good for 125. Unfucking real. And look, I'm, I'm taking control of the mouse right now. Just <laughs> this is what I'm doing. 
<laughs> and, I, and I'm looking at the number. Yeah, I mean, you do the same thing when you're using the keyboard. You just don't, you know, you oh, don't have to first mother. look at where the mouse is and then look back at the number on the, on the dash. You can just little cruise and then just watch where the number ends up. Ugh. So on the rail driver, which I have yet to calibrate in, they actually use the um, independent brake lever for, for the dynamic, for the for the cruise control. Really? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because there's no uh, the the SL doesn't have an independent. Yeah, but I got to figure out how to like. We were talking about this earlier, inverting like. Oh yeah, the pulling throttle. the throttle back yeah. to yeah. We could. We, I got to figure that out. There, I, wondering if you can save more than one control profile and just switch between control profiles. I don't even know. Because I was just told that it's plug and play. Yeah. Oh, for... hang on. So you got this stop, uh, the standing rule, so you gotta blow a, a crossing seat. Oh, that's right. And um, the bell as well. Which comes on automatically. That's my favorite part about uh, buffing at these high-speed stations like New Brunswick or uh, Princeton Junction is if you get an Acela coming through and there's a, a local train stopped on the platform they ooh, just to listen to that Doppler effect on the horn at 150 miles an hour is great alright so what is the horn sequence? Uh, a long long short long like you would for crossing oh okay yeah. good clear track 3 county clear county upgrade to clear 150 at the West End Hotel. However, only authorized up to 145. Yes. And only realistically good for 130 since you're coming up on the first curve anyway. So I'm going to only set the cruise control to uh, set the cruise control to 130 here. Yeah, Nick. Uh, we love you, Nick. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> yeah, dude, dude. There was when I booked, even though I booked last minute, there was like no one on that train. When I booked, it was like 15% full. So I think they were trying to give away those uh, those seats. I could have shelled out a little bit extra for business, but it's whatever. Who cares? Yeah. You're just gonna be sleeping anymore. I think last time Ben was telling me, last time he took the uh, took 66 or 67, they didn't even put the correct. A cafe car on so there wasn't he bought a business class ticket and he didn't get the business class seat because on 67 66 they usually use the cafes that have the half seating and they have the two two one seating in the rear for first class or business class and he said the last time he took 60 uh 67 uh they didn't put the correct car on he got shafted but we're fucking uh nick is 639 a good loco No fucking clue. I know. I know some of them are hit or miss. <laughs> I'm just asking, because we're just cruising. Uh, Adam's interlocking on the left. So, coming up on the reverse curves at Dean's, mm -hmm. which are 130. Uh, which right? are 130. So I'm gonna probably at the next. Clearing, I'm gonna come down on the cruise control and we'll let the train take care of the deceleration here. So right about here, I'm gonna come down to 130. Or in F, I gotta remember that. Uh, Nick says it's good. He likes it. He likes 639. Is that what is that what my power is? Yeah. Okay. He says he likes it. Good. All right. So it's uh, access is counting me down now. You can see the curves off in the distance. Wait a minute. He he said it changed. <laughs> It changed? Oh, no. 650. Nick, make up your fucking mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was perfect. What does it have? 650 or 639? <laughs> he 
to 650 is a bad one. Ah, oh, fantastic. Wait I'll a be minute. asleep for most of it anyway. He's got 650? Wait, can you... You confuse me. What? Why did you type 67 colon 639 plus 5? <laughs> five coaches? Yeah, but why did he type 639? Nick. You're confusing me. All right, so out of the Dean's curves in this direction, you're good for 145 again until you uh, get past midway, then it upgrades to 150. But because the train takes so long to accelerate, I just set the cruise control straight to 150. And I usually uh, don't have to adjust anything, and it won't overspeed. All right, upgrade to 150, perfect. Not to touch anything for a little while. I don't know what local you have on 67. That's okay. We'll find out in a couple hours. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fine. As long as it doesn't break down or get stuck in the snow on the way back, I'll be happy. Boston Crew's the best. Everybody knows this. 639. Okay, we're good. Nick, are you working the train? Oh, I don't know why he brought up 650. Oh, yeah, yeah, I was asking if 639 was good. Yeah, I, I, I don't give a fuck about 650. <laughs> but that's, I mean, that's good to know. That it always has issues. Why do you think some have issues and some don't? That's weird. Just, like, manufacturing issues? Every, like, every locomotive fleet is like that. So, like, you take any locomotive fleet and you're going to have uh, members that play nice and members that end up being shocked. It's just... The way things work. Was it the same way with um, some of the SLS sets? Oh, probably. It was the same way with steam locomotives too. Yeah. All right. You got some that were, you know, they each over time, each individual unit sort of develops like a personality. And if you run all the units enough times, you sort of get to know which ones are which ones will play nice and which ones which ones don't. Yeah, some my buddy Dan um, would tell me like, oh, I was on such and such a cella and it's a dog set. <laughs> like, it runs like a fucking dog. Piece of shit. And, like, I don't know. Apparently, it's a thing. Like, it just won't accelerate very well past a certain point. So there's a lot of variance between sets. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna use the same stopping mechanism from the other side, so that was the first CIL box. Second CIL box, I'm gonna come down on the cruise control to uh, 135. Gonna break nice and easy for CP Park here. So that's where we come down to 150. All right, yeah, 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 yeah. I oh, know, that's good. Make it, I'm not. No, you're fine. No. Because of the th three mile an, an hour tolerance. True. But I like my points. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that I can't see that I'm earning because I'm not at all. So what is CP Clark? Mile post 47.3 or something like that? No, because uh, Princeton is at 47. So and, CP oh, Clark shit, is at I'm 49. Mixing. That's it. I'm mixing yeah. it. 48 point something. I'm trying to learn my physical characteristics. I'm not going to get all the mileposts for Oh, damn. Whitsim joined the chat. Oh, where were you earlier, bro? We needed you. Were you just running a train? <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean that in a fucked up way. 48.7 trains. Still learning. Oh, Nick says he did the uh, Amtrak 93 and then 176 back mm. today. Okay. So he's gonna... Amtrak employees do CDOT trains? Uh, 
yet. I didn't know that. Amtrak uh, has the operating contract for Shoreline East. I didn't know that. Yeah. The CT Rail Hartford line is is a different company, but Amtrak holds the uh, line. Shit. I two ninety five. There you go. Coming up on Hamilton. We've got a two ninety five here in uh, Rhode Island too. Not the same. Alright, we're gonna drop to clear one twenty five here. Cactus after dark. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Alright, we come down on the cruise control to forty five. Yeah, let's watch Mike finish this off. We've been going a while now, man. Fucking four hours now. We started at 43. Yeah, we did. Shit. It's gone by so fast, though. Yeah, I know. If you're not opposed, uh, we could spend the last half hour. I could throw the cab car into a custom scenario. Sure. I've always wanted to mess around where you just run the cab car as a local train. I mean... You're not going to catch your train at Kingston until 10.45, 10 10 yeah. something like that? We got to be at Kingston no later than like 10.40. It only takes 20 minutes to get from my house to Kingston, so... Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, see, so the access curve is following me, so I got to... I got to take a minimum break. So I think this... This, um... Cap signal downgrade progression is like actually accurate. It should be until you get like closer to Trenton. Because remember, you're coming up on that stop signal there. Right, but I think it's I think it's pretty close. Yeah, it's close. You've got approach medium in the cab, but, um... <laughs> oh, you have, um... You have ATC cut out. Never mind. Yeah. You're fine. Yeah, because I like to come into Trenton doing more than 20. Hmm. Well, obviously. <laughs> uh, Nick says, 67 has so much padding, but after New Haven... It has no padding, and so New York Penn. Yeah, and then you sit at New York Penn for like 50 minutes. Yeah, but what the fuck does that help? Because no padding on the New Haven line means nothing. I don't know, man. You max out at 80 for like two seconds. Did that change? What? Oh. The, the speed limits on the New Haven line. I don't think so. It probably even went down. Because they had another de derailment or a collision or something. Say I'm wrong. <laughs> In chat. <laughs> Not you. Oh my god. What do you mean it's good for you New Haven conductors, Nick? You don't want to be on a train any longer than you have to. Still got pretty good viewership after four hours. Yeah. 27 people. It's good. I told you about 30 people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good shit. Ah, look at those speeds. Yeah, you did nice. Don't remember what happened here. That had to be a cab downgrade to... Oh, that was, that's Elizabeth. Yeah. Yeah, that's Elizabeth. Okay. Pretty good. Yeah, no complaints there. Yeah. That's a peach, hon. Alright, so we're gonna do something a little different that I don't think Brandon's done before. Yeah, I haven't. We're gonna do with we're this. gonna go into this. So create new 
one final. Oh my god, what am I in store for? We had new service from Dark Hill. I've never been in the fucking what is this? The scenario oh. editor? Uh yeah, this is scenario creator. Scenario creator. I've never done this before. Where should we start? And track five. Start mine. No pen track, track five. Me. Okay, I'm fine so far. Or Metro Park. Blood pressure's going up. Confirm instructions. <laughs> confirm cab car. Mm. Uh, noon is fine. Right, I'm gonna take my blood pressure cuff and take a they take a reading. Empty. Cab car. Equipment loaner. Why would anybody want this thing? Met cab. Oh my god. But should I add anything else? Um, so it's not so empty? Well, I mean, that's been the biggest complaint. Uh, Alright, so let's add some other stuff. Oh my god. Well, he has more stuff. Oh my god. He's doing the cab car, guys. Oh shit. I'm gonna have a panic attack. What are you gonna add? Regional boys. <laughs> yeah, Lander. Um, the cab car has kind of scarred me. I'm not operating it, though, so it's going to be fine. Unless, uh, so, unless you want me to. Uh, we can trade off. I, can, I, way through. I mean, I yeah, we'll figure it out. Uh, let me see. Semi local black city. I had the regional leaving at 12, so I want the black local to leave earlier than the regional so that they don't pass us around. Like, I've never fucked with this thing. Do, do you guys, do you guys in the chat, have you had much success with the uh, scenario planner or whatever they call it? I've never borrowed with bothered with it because well I'm too busy doing other stuff and I don't know Trap says it's annoying to use well yeah cuz sometimes it doesn't work remember earlier I was trying to do something and it crashed yeah so I'm hoping it doesn't actually Oh, there goes another Acela by the house. Let's see what this one is. And the last one was 21... This was probably 2170. I want a full 150 by the house. On Yep, 2170 on track number two. On his way to Boston. Jeez, you could probably spend all day in here. Could you make... Actually, this is an honest question. It's local. Uh, could you make the full New York to Trenton timetable in the scenario planner? No, because you're limited to the number of spawn points. Shit. Uh, so, as you can see, as I'm adding services, 
See how certain tracks are taken up? Oh, yeah, they get grayed so out. I can't, yeah. So I can only add as many trains as there are spawn points, which are basically at, at all the stops and stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, that uh, makes sense. That, that sucks. So I'm going to fill up New York Penn, and then that's where we'll... Uh... Oh, my God. The um, editor. I hope you guys get it someday. Honestly. See, look at... This was what I was complaining about earlier. Look at all of the consists they have created... Mm -hmm for the mbta stuff and they only use the five car train in the timetable but there's there's they have game trains on here those are some yeah they big got, yeah fucking trains milky pen local yeah because the it's coming out of penn station but i got a diesel on it smoky <laughs> Oh my god. Tracks are out. Uh, two more. Oh, this one. Sorry, sometimes my mouse does double clicks on its own. That's okay. Um, I've been meaning to replace the mouse. But it's the best wireless mouse I've had to date. Corsair Dark Core RGB. I actually was trying to clean the mouse, and I ripped the left mouse button off. It literally snapped off. So I'm surprised Mike hasn't made the mouse button come <laughs> off. <laughs> It'll come off. It's out of control. Anyway, let's take a look at the chat. Whitsim says I feel like I need to get a drink for what's coming <laughs> uh, does right, he well, have any honestly, to be worried hold off on your drink because I'm gonna play this and 50-50 and it's probably gonna crash the game no take a shot it'll be fine it shouldn't I mean, yeah, I I do have experimental like yes. tweak, tweaks and shit uh -huh. on this computer. All right, so where is everything else? I want to know. Yeah. Penn Station. Oh, everything's just in Penn. Yeah, it's just chilling. I think there. the dispatcher's confused because some of these trains I had leaving like, uh, what time is it? Twelve? Like earlier than twelve. So the dispatcher probably just. That's okay. okay. All right, so. Reverser, how drunk were you when we were trying to find this? I remember I was trying to tell you where it was and you couldn't find it because it was so goddamn small. Dude, I was tired and drunk at the same time. <laughs> I did not want to do this last run, but I said I was feeling good, so the chat just kind of <laughs> egged me on. So, I was both. Dude, I was gone. <laughs> and if you want to go back and watch that stream, fine. It's, it's my fault for doing it. I need to do I don't think so um no yeah I'm not I'm not proud of that stream right, so this is where we're gonna leave our camera see everything that's important Remind us was we're stopping at Newark Airport, then Express to Metro Park, Metuchen, Edison, New Brunswick, Jersey Avenue. Local stops after Metro Park, so uh, we'll shut the HUD off for this. Close down and go. Um, did you set the over here? So the um the brake thing? No, it's a, it's a passenger. 
no, no. Oh, there is no passenger. That's right. It's it's lead here. That's right. Recommended somebody to handle all. There off. we go. All right. There, there we we're go. good now. It still wants you to unlock doors here. Oh, that's why. Finish loading passenger. That's the dangers of running with the HUD off. You don't know what the game wants you to do. Exactly! No, Mike hasn't been dipping into my booze. It's fine. I have not. I'm just getting really tired. It has the same effect. Hmm. All right. Door is locked. Then we'll shut the hut off after that. There we go. So I was up at. I went to bed at like 11, and then I woke up at 7-ish. I started cooking breakfast. I made some. Oh, it's beautiful. Bacon, sausage, and uh, he devoured five scrambled eggs that, <laughs> that I made. Those were pretty good fucking eggs, dude. Oh, dude, I know how to make eggs. I season them wonderfully because um, I know this guy likes salt, so I, I put a little bit of extra salt into the eggs. Um, yeah, it was awesome. But he slept to like almost nine, like eight forty-five. I had the bacon going and everything. House is just smelling of... Oh, yeah. I got out of bed because it started smelling real nice. Oh, it's great. I'm a, I'm a big cook. I, I cook for myself all the time. Whenever I have a guest over, I always treat them. Anyway, distant for cliff. Approach limited. Roger. Approach limited track four. Crossing over at Hunter. On to track five. The airport. Good, brother? Yeah, I'm good. So you're switching over to track five? Yeah. Okay. It's harder to play with the HUD off on the Metro Liner because you only have an analog speedometer. And it's hard to tell sometimes uh, whether you're obeying the speed limits or not. You sort of have to, like, approximate where you want the needle on the, on the dial to be to comply with the speed. Whereas it's a lot easier on some of the other equipment because you just have a digital readout of your speeds. You just make 45 match 45. But I think I'll make out. I like how close the ADU is to your face. Yes. In this one, it's so much easier to read. Oh, for sure. This track always fucks with me, though. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it does that little uh, weird jog there. Yeah. into track five, uh, Newark Airport. Yeah, so remember, I only have, uh, I only have a five-car train. It's a short train. So we're gonna spot the stop with the front of the cab car at the end of the, uh, the last escalator on the platform, so... Is that the way they always stop it? Uh, shorter trains, yeah. Okay. I'm gonna take a minimum break here. Nice. 
So Whitsim says to remember to take your pink Newark Airport ticket. Oh, yeah. <laughs> for access to the monorail. Oh, you got an approach limited. That's different. Yeah, because they're probably crossing over to track two. Or not two, uh, three at lane. Yeah. Instead of just having me come onto, onto four and stay on four. Yeah, okay. All right. A little bit further than I'd wanted, but this is okay. No, that's fine. Still on the platform. And the rear door is actually right next to the first escalator, so that's fine. Yeah, so you can see, based on the design of the airport station, there's only really two... Uh, there's two entry points onto each platform, not counting the elevators. So most engineers try to spot their trains around those. Doors closing. That's another bug with the Metroliner equipment is that it, when the doors are open, there's it goes into the state where the brakes freeze. So nothing you do with the brake handle changes the state of the brakes, and that's that's obviously. Yeah, they're probably crossing us over. Uh, hmm. Five back to four, and then four to three. Because I know the normal crossover is... That's an 80 mile hour crossover. Yeah. Five to four is 80 miles an hour. So they must be switching us to one of the inner tracks, yeah. is what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. See, that's, that's what knowing... The signal system is going to be able to tell you when you come into an interlock. Like, just by knowing that you would normally get a cab speed 80 here if you were just going on yeah, the track. Yeah, so limited four. clear at lane. Yep. There we go. Just by knowing you only get a cab 80 just to go on to track 4, if you get anything other than a cab 80, it means you're either following someone or they're actually switching you further from track 4 to another track. That's absolutely correct. So, that's why you should know the signal. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Just rely on the game to tell you. What yep. Yep. Which is set. Going on to track three. Look at that. So then once he clears lane interlocking, the cabs should upgrade back to clear 125, assuming that there's no other adverse traffic in front of him. I'm not actually going to do it, though, because... No, you got the implicit yeah. downgrade over by North Elizabeth, right? Yeah, which is... Keep my controller in throttle 1. Keep train speed around 45 miles. So we're through downgrade. And I can come up to uh, 70. Remember, B speeds on 2 and 3... Through Almora are 70. Or the curves at Almora are 70. 75 and 70. Versus 85 and 80. So you're just holding limited speed because you know you're going to get the downgrade to um, to limited speed out here. So yeah, so it's why accelerate and then throw the brakes on. Yeah, exactly. It's silly. Yeah. There goes another HSP. Yeah. you cruise towards Elizabeth. Max asks, how old are these cab cars? Uh, I don't know. When were the Metro liners built? I want to say late 60s. Like 68. Like, like when man landed on the moon. Yeah, like 1968 around. 
Though this is where I should get upgrade back to clear. So I'll take a notch and throttle out. You get up to 70. Yep. I get up to 70 and shut the throttle. So Max, basically the answer to your question is a long time ago. We're coming through Elizabeth, approximately mile post 14. Oh, good, they do have the B speeds program in here. Yeah, so nice. I was going to show you that in the editor earlier. So there's like an ancillary speed um, property applied to the track. So you just have one of them is called access. Yeah. And then there's like a second one called access underscore Bravo B. It doesn't seem like they have C speeds coded in though, because I know when you come through uh, on New Jersey Transit equipment, it shows you A speeds. There's no C speeds. Yep, I noticed that. So I think they're starting to play around with the implementation that started with that German route. I forget which one. Was. I don't remember either. But that's what spawned the different um, train speeds for Consist. And. Uh, want to implement something similar into Boston, but I don't exactly like how it's implemented. It, you can't see in the editor where it's placed. It's not like a normal speed limit. It's like a, just a secondary property that's placed on the tracks. It, it's very, very bizarre. Very strange. Yeah, it is. Right. Oh, your landmarks. So if you're coming back east toward Penn Station, you start breaking your own aura. Exactly. That's where you start experiencing your cab signal downgrades. Use that as a landmark. So we're coming up on Merck interlocking, right? Yep. Which would be off to the left. To the left. Yeah. Which is right around mile post 19, if I remember right. Alright, I see Rahway now, so I'm going to take a minimum break here. We'll bring our trains down nice. Should be crossing us back over at Island to uh, track four for the stop at Metro Park. So we'll probably see a signal downgrade uh, at Rhodes on approach. So I'll get ready to throw a suppression on. Yeah, we'll see how the cab signals play with that downgrade. I, I'm not confident they'll play nicely. So, that was weird. It was a clear signal, but you got approach medium. I mean, if you were expecting the drop there, I guess we'll comply, right? I think it's a little early. I think you should get the drop of the distance signals from Menlo, but that's just me. I'll have to look at the track charts. I think we, I remember we looked at this. You're supposed to get 
a time drop at the 217 signals. So the timers aren't currently implemented. Right. Okay, so I can't even see this. That's approach medium. No, no, it's flashing. Yeah, it's approach flashing. limited. Approach, yeah. We barely see the flashing. That's all the problem. That's where I would have expected to get the drop. Because there's plenty of time there to bring the train speed down to 45 before you have to cross over it. Is so, that is? Because I think if you if if we were paying attention earlier at the road signals, that that aspect was displaying clear when I passed there, and then it gave me the drop to 45. It did. So, yeah, which is not conforming. Yeah, obviously. Does that happen often? Switch failure? No. Yes. Not in game. I mean, we're coming up on Island now. Limited clear? Or is that a. No, that's limited clear. Yep. Alright, limited clear track. Who would have known that signals are your weak spot? It's like everybody. Yeah. Spot. It's weird. I don't know. Everyone has their own area where they're strong. But yeah, absolutely. I'm going to spot this right at the e-board. Minimum break here. This is where you'll be getting off at like 3 in the morning. Yeah, 3.30. Jesus Christ. Good stop. Very nice stop. I think so. Oh, yeah. Right next to the e board ticket. Yeah, why the fuck not? People having some trouble getting on and off the train. They're all just standing in front of the doors. <laughs> <laughs> the passengers always have trouble. Hey, at least there's some activity on the road. Yeah. It's really weird because, um, go into the flying camera for a second. I think they modeled it. Yeah, so the way I get to Metro Park is this is the Garden State uh, the Garden State Parkway here. I come down the Garden State Parkway and I get off like at this exit here. So I take this this off ramp and you literally come onto the street and this is what you see. You're at grade level with the corridor here. So you just come and the trains are like right in front of you. But then to get to the parking deck you actually have to go all the way down to that intersection, go under the tracks, and come back this way uh, to get in. So mm. you you get off the highway, and it's it's another five minutes before you're actually through those two traffic lights there in the, in the parking deck. I was kind of worried uh, driving to uh, from work yesterday that I wasn't going to make the train because knowing my luck, there was an accident on the parkway just in front of the exit there and I got stuck in it but the train ended up being like five six minutes late. I wasn't really in any danger no you got there like yeah 20 minutes early right I got there if the train had been on time I got there 10 minutes before the train was supposed to be I did so Chris Keys asks why does the ADU count down the speed limits 
on the Acela and not on the ACS 64. Well, so recently they started doing, they being Amtrak, started counting down the, um, counting down, showing you the alert curve coming up to a speed restriction. On access. Yeah, so this is an access thing. Positive train control. And um, not all of that at the time had translated over to the rest of the rolling stock. So the ACS 64s at the time were not doing such a thing. They were still going down to the speed once you reached the restriction. So it, it's kind of cool in a way because you can operate the Acela and see the alert curve counting down so you get more used to like how the braking curve is actually calculated and then if you want to challenge yourself a bit more you can operate an ACS 64 and then brake appropriately and then if you fuck up you, you'll, you'll see it right away on the aspect display unit but if you reach the restriction at the right time then you will see it when you reach the restriction. So it's, it's, it's kind of a cool dynamic. Milepost 25. So at the next road bridge, that's usually where I start breaking for, uh, for touching. So here's that overpass. Set the brakes. 10 pounds set there. And that's the Lincoln home signal, so I'm going to give it a little bit more. A little bit more. So now we should be, yep, we're in suppression now. And we'll go to full service here. Amtrak stops. I made the scenario so that it's not. Oh. Yeah, so I should have braked probably a little bit more. Amtrak brakes, I think, are not as strong as the New Jersey Transit brakes. Jesus Christ, that hurts. <laughs> it's all good, brother. <laughs> I'll do better at this. But touching's always a hard stop because it's on that blind curve, so if you don't really, aren't really familiar with the territory, it can be very easy to start braking too late. So you're making like all stops on this one almost? Yeah, I think I'm making every other stop to Trenton. Every other stop, okay. Or not every other, but all the remaining stops to Trenton. Got it, got it. station does kind of sneak up on you but yeah so the spot is still the same though when you see that road bridge first overpass uh after mile post 25 take like 12 pounds there for that you know if you need to take another five or six pounds at the home signals or lincoln or just go to full service there when in doubt come in slower it's always the rule hmm because you can always come in nice and easy and adjust your braking as long as you're not going too fast. Uh, and you'll, you should be able to make that stop. Here's your 80s back off the road. got that speed limit. Because I never get upgraded to 90. Really? Yeah. 
Maybe that's correct, though. I don't know. You gotta I'll, check the timetable. I'll have to look at the timetable. Because yeah. I, I notice I'm held to 80 through the reverse curves, yeah. not just the on first that, curve. On track four. Yeah. Might be correct. Basically, a suppression reduction. Yeah. Point. Stop right at the mile post. Is that the stopping point usually? No. I would have liked to stop a lot closer to the end because this platform, um, the only entrance to the westbound platform at Edison is towards the. End. I'm sure it's fine. Yeah, that's actually not too bad. Yeah, so at Edison, on the westbound platform, the only way to get on and off the platform is right here at the end of the platform. So if you wanted to walk all the way to the front, you'd have to get on back here and walk all the way to the front because there's actually a, uh, there's actually an industry track right here you can see on the right side. Mm. And we, I remember someone was asking about freight operations on New Jersey tra uh, on, on the corridor in this area, and the local job that comes out of a touching yard actually services this track time to time. So you'll see him come through here and actually work this uh, work this engine track. Good shit. Go. But I mean, these people that are going to catch this train are going to get here Oh yeah. Kind of early. You, I mean, so you would hope. Yeah, you would hope. I'm not worried about making their train on time. So what's our next stop? New Brunswick. New Brunswick. Break point is the start of the bridge, which I'm going to probably throw a pretty heavy break on there. Yeah, definitely you should, right? Because yeah. I normally start breaking at the end of the curve. Which is probably a bit early for you. Just a tad. the defect detector and then the curve. Alright, let's see the station. Maybe off in the distance, yeah. Oh, uh, it's so far away. Yeah. Take a minimum here to set the brakes. And I'm gonna go up to like 20 pounds. Yep. So if you took 20 pounds, you can see the white needle on the bottom 
the right hand side right at 90. So it starts at 110, goes down to 90. 110 to minus 20 is 90. I don't want to go to a full service here. I was going a bit lower. You want to take over for me? I'm getting a bit tired. All right, I'll take over for you, buddy. All right, let's swap her up. <laughs> ah, I'll just move over like All this. Right. That's fine. Wasn't quite expecting that, but it's empty. Okay. Can I pass me that soda, please? Yeah, sure. Thanks. There you go. Those allied tumble are tracking. It's your phone, Mike. Alright, let's take a look. Shit. Ow. Remind me, Mike. Why? Is it why? Oh, uh, for, oh for the doors? Yeah. yeah. Uh, why for the left doors? You for the right doors. Ah, that's right. I'm gonna wait till it's actually, because I got traction locked before. So release the brakes. Now you're. What is our next stop? Uh, Jersey Avenue. Oh shit. Okay. I might keep the uh. Hold on. Yeah, hey, you're good. I'll tell you what to do. Go to full power. Full power. Full power, baby. Okay. Get her up to track speed here. God damn. Okay. What you're gonna do is you, when you see the county home signals, you're gonna okay. shut off. But you won't apply brakes until the county home signals and you take twenty pounds. Take twenty pounds at the county home. Okay. okay. Because you'll be doing track speed. Alright. That should bring you down nice and easy. You might need to add a little more, you might not. But if you want to hit the platform, you're probably doing around 35. Okay. 35, maybe. I will do my best. I mean, I can see them, but I don't like, see them. Yeah, not yet. Shut them off right here. Okay. Once I pass them, take 20 pounds. Take a minimum first to set the brakes. And then, now take 20 pounds. A little bit more. A little bit more. There you go. Better come down nice. I don't know that Jersey have a stopping point. Start graduating off. They didn't even wait. They're like, oh, I gotta get on. <laughs> I'm gonna miss it. <laughs> Stupid bastards. Uh, Unreal. Let's 
So we've got Princeton Junction and then Hamilton and then Trenton, right? Yep. Okay. Jersey Avenue is at mile post 32. Is it 33? I'm trying to remember. I think it's 33. And then our next stop is Princeton Junction. Oh, thank you. Junction is at 47. Yeah, 47. Clear track for Delco. Delco. I always forget that that's right next to uh, Jersey Avenue. It's a convenient switch, though. Yeah. A lot of the Super Expresses do that. Caucus, Newark, Penn Station, then Princeton Junction. A lot of them would get routed down track three all the way to Delco, mm -hmm. where you got the 80 mile an hour switch there. So instead of having to slow down to 45 to cross over at like Midway, they can just cross over at 80 miles an hour. Right, right, right. Okay. And then a lot of the time, there'd be a local train at Jersey Avenue taking on passengers while the express crossed over in front of them. And they would follow the express. I mean, it, it makes a lot of sense to have an 80 mile an hour crossover. Yeah. Alright, you got a bit of time. Yeah, absolutely. Take your time. Just you and I chat. Mike's not here anymore. You can talk shit about him now. I mean, I could do the math, try to figure out like mile post and speed, trying to figure out where I am. Oh, wait, there's a mile post. Nine miles out. away. Okay. We pass Adams yet? No. Okay, we should be the next. Thing. Use the hug. You won't tell. <laughs> I don't think we passed Adams. Wait, I don't even remember the mile post for Adams. Uh, oh, no, we passed Adams, because we're coming up <laughs> on the 130 curve now. Adams was back there, actually. I don't Probably, yeah. uh, so 39. I don't remember the mile post for Adams. I think Adams is around 30, 38, 37 and a half. No, wait, so I'm not going to cheat. I'm not going to use the hook. <laughs> I can do this. 1979 says, great work on Boston's nice plane route with us. Appreciate you, bro. Absolutely. Chris Keyes Photography says, I wish SEPTA would just give me TV 
get a Chestnut Hill West route. Uh, Chestnut Hill West to Trenton, Kansas. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> we'd want fucking Trenton to Philly. Trenton first. to Philly. You know what I think would be great uh, if the, if they ever got the SEPTA license is would be to do. Um, this is a big ask. Philly to Harrisburg. Could get oh, a, yeah. the actual place for that the big ass, yeah. for the cab cars. Because then it could continue. That goes through the upper level, right? A uh, lower level. So you change ends on the low, lower level. Clear track for Midway. Oh, I know. So we're mile plus three. Um, big yes. Hmm. There's yeah, tons so of reference material for uh, yeah, so the uh, Keystone trains come into. Why? Why is this? A... I don't know. I didn't press any. Shut the throttle off. Okay. The it's brakes. been released. That's a... I don't get it. Did you? Oh, did you throw the reverser again? The reverse is in reverse. Okay, oh, there you go. come on. Oh. <laughs> I mean, this... Jesus Christ. This is what happens oh, when I play with the keyboard. Oh, that's funny. That, well, no, that's what happens because they didn't lock the reverse. Well, I you mean, be and because I, the I mash my buttons together yeah. when I play with the keyboard. Yeah, you shouldn't be able to move the reverser when the throttle is in. So that's an issue. But yeah, so 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 Keystone service trains are gonna come into 30th Street Philly on the lower level, and then they're gonna change ends and then come back out and go to Harrisburg. Okay. That's how they. Yeah. yeah, I don't know actually how they how they do that. But it's good to know. Uh, Winston says I can't imagine the whole Sioux Penn Philly interlock. It's a big interlock, the Sioux interlock. It is. It is big. If they can't get the current timetable right, how can they get that? No, I don't know. I don't even know what my own man. That's fine. Just keep an eye out for the uh, shuttle track. Shuttle track. That's right. You're a little bit of a ways. I believe this is uh, overpass number three. You got at least two more overpasses before the shuttle track. Okay. So there's overpass number two. Overpass number one is right afterwards, and then about a half a mile or so after that. So you're gonna, I'll do what? Well, you're going a little faster than you would in New Jersey Transit, so what you're going to do is when you see the clearing for the shuttle track, you'll take a minimum. And then when you actually pass the shuttle track, you're going to increase that to about a 12 mile. Keep going. Still good. I think I'm just going to coast for it. Yeah. There is your clearing for the shuttle track, so take a min. Okay, get a min. Perfect. Leave it right there. Now go up to about another like six or seven pounds. Four, four. Go to twenty. Now leave her at twenty. platform, I think. I'm gonna put it a bit more. Yeah, well, you're already at this. Oh, this will be fine. Don't graduate off. If you overshoot, we'll send the dinky down to get your pants. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's mad they have to walk back to the shuttle now. Fuck them. <laughs> you know, like, Jesus Christ. Oh, uh, that's funny. 
Lord have mercy. <laughs> Eastern Route Mainline says you nailed it. There we go. <laughs> oh, MLP Derek says they would also need New Jersey Transit Atlantic City Line train. Oh, jeez. Yeah, because the Atlantic City Line trains also come out. Don't ask for too much. <laughs> Christ's sake. Pennsylvania would need a P42 for the East Coast Corridor. Yeah. This is exactly why they're not making this shit. Yeah. Hell, oh, Whitsum says that's called a conductor ring. Next stop, Hamilton. Hamilton. Roger. If it was night, I'd be calling out C.P. Clark here. You can see C.P. Clark. Oh, I'll call out C.P. Clark anyway. That'd be fine. Because that's 48.7. And then Hamilton is 53. I love the acceleration on this shit. Yeah, it's great. Oh Five cars. God. Well, that's the thing, too. Uh, on In the scenario planner, you can actually select really short consists with the multi-levels of the ALD 26. So if I had a five-car train of multi-levels, it would accelerate almost as fast. Yeah, I, I believe it. And the converse is also true. If they had given us, like, an 11-car Amfleet train with the cab car leading, it would accelerate just as slow. So it's really, you know... So how's, how's the wheel set, though, compared between the um, LP46 and the ACS64? Not as bad. They do slip, um, but it doesn't create that really high-pitched squeeze that ALP. The, the ACS64 slipping, you, it's more of like a growl and like a, like a metal rubbing on metal kind of sound. Mm -hmm. And it is like a squealing. Clear your CP card. Roger. That should have been round post 49. Yes. Yeah, so you're going to take a. Uh, to be conservative, I would say take a minimum break right after you. Okay. Which is the one with the green bottom? Yes. The double overpass. Minimum at. Minimum after okay. you pass. Okay. We'll double check again the speeds. Get to. Uh, I should probably bug this, but I think the, the throttle is missing. So you know that that sound you get when you go from off to one? Mm -hmm. It should make that sound in between every notch. Really? On, on this, yeah. Because this is actually like a notch in the controller. Oh, okay. It's not like a continuous range. Yeah, so, I, I, so didn't, I didn't know that. I should bug it. It's, it's a really easy one. Huh. Same thing with the... Um, ALP 46, the ring bell. Okay. It's missing notch sounds. You hear it when you go from release to hold, but then it's missing sounds until you go. Shit, I didn't know that. You're good at signals. I'm good at sounds. Exactly. So we each have our um, we each have our uh, specialties. So mile plus 52. I'm one mile from Hamilton. Uh, yes. So that is 295 bridge. Take a minimum. Past the disused signal bridge, uh, bring it to a 15 pound reduction. Go to a full service. I should have went to What happens? Oh, yeah, dude, you should have platform doing 7. It's not going to do anything now. Jesus <laughs> Christ. 
I guess that's not the stopping point then, Mike. No, it is. I should have had you take a full service at the bridge. At the bridge pounds, instead of... Yeah. I think you said minimum at the bridge. No, yeah, minimum at the bridge, but then a full service at the same time. Oh, bridge. okay. <laughs> I'm still not used to... No, it. you're fine, bro. Yeah. It, um, it's just it's higher speeds. We talked about this earlier. Well, it's not even the fact that it's higher speeds. It's a slower braking rate on this one, too. Is it? Yeah, it's slightly less. Transit braking equipment. Uh, uh, the transit equipment brakes a little faster than the Amfleet in the game. I don't know if that's prototypical. I have no idea. That's okay. You got a car on it. Yeah. Just make the passengers walk back. I'll do my own stuff at Trent. <laughs> <laughs> you won't have to do anything at Trent if you I leave the have signal to do anything systems at, yeah, on. Yeah, because yeah, you're gonna. It's gonna force you to come down to twenty. The um, the signal progression is actually not bad. No, it's, yeah. Assuming, you know, you accept that you're coming into yeah. a... <laughs> into a stop. Coming into a stop signal. That's the thing I was talking about earlier, how the brakes lock up when the doors are open. Okay. The bug that causes it to... That when the doors then close and then the brakes unlock, if you're already in release before the doors close, it won't release. You have to go oh, back geez. into... You have to go back to minimum and... Ugh. It's exhausting. Yeah. Whatever. A lot of, a lot of little quirks. Gotta remember. There are a lot of little but I know the approach into Trenton, so... Yeah, that's it. Brandon, if you ever go to Kingston in the rain, that's a perfect way to hear the ACL, uh, ACS storm. If there's a day off that I have and it's raining, I tend to stay home. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just don't. I don't really Honestly, after to work out. tomorrow, yeah. if it's still like sort of snowy out, that would be the same situation. And there, I'm sure they'll be running trains tomorrow. Um. Yeah. Well, I mean, they will be. I don't know. I I just took the past week off of, off of work, so I don't know if I want to do anything <laughs> after work. <laughs> I got all left to catch up. On. Yeah. Really there. Next block point should probably drop me down to approach medium forty five. have a suppression that hard to read at this angle. Whatever, I'll just coast through him. And...
watched, but we have an approach limited for a stop. <laughs> I'm not even going to try to explain that. No, what you're going to do is you're going to go out on the throttle, get up to 45, and slam on the full surface. No, what I'm going to pretend floor. is that it's actually displaying <laughs> slow approach, which is what it actually is. <laughs> so I'm going to go to compression, and I'm going to fucking come down to 20. Yeah, because we're within an inch of one. Ah, can't walk. Ding. 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 Signal progression. Oh, yeah, it does. <laughs> it definitely needs a hug. <laughs> Don't worry, I've reported all this shit. Ah. It's all good, though. Is that window not open? Oh, it does. It does. And I'm, um, coming up to the stop signal. My buddy was telling me he usually spots it at the staircase right here. For the minimum? Uh, no, uh, my transit buddy. Oh, when you, he meaning comes to a stop. Yeah, he comes to a stop. stops there. Because he says he likes watching. <laughs> okay. That's a nice range. He's a weird kid. Got it. Alright, nice stop. Then I'll take it right up to, uh, compression. Let all these motherfuckers out. And, uh... <laughs> yeah, I think that's, I think that's good. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> This is what happens when you run a local train with only five cars. Wow. The whole world is emptying out of the train. I think they I think the whole world lives a train. <laughs> oh, I think you got all. Oh, someone's oh, getting oh, on. One's getting on. He's going, <laughs> so to he's going into yard. the yard, yeah. Yeah. Jesus. I think that pretty much dishes uh, it up for what we were going to show off, right? Yeah. I think that's, yeah. Pretty good. Hell yeah. That was a long oh fucking stretch. Over five hours? No, not that, not quite that long. Sure. 4.30 um, to 9.40? That's five hours. Oh, dude. shit. Okay. <laughs> uh, time flies, guys. So that's gonna round it off. Does anybody have any final questions for uh, Mike and I? We'll give you guys a minute to post something in chat. That's all I had. And then we've got a little bit of time before I gotta get you to Kingston. Damn, that was a long stream. Hey, uh, no problem. It's always a pleasure. <laughs> I got free time. Driving trains, man. All right. Good night, guys. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Absolutely. Well, I'll keep it open for another minute or so for questions, and then I'll uh, I'll close it down. Longest stream I've ever done. Hey, Derek. Thanks for joining, buddy. Good night. How do you get up on 67? I'm going to be knocked <laughs> out, buddy. I got a long day ahead of me tomorrow, and, and if I'm going to be driving through that snow, I got to have some sleep. That's a late fucking train. Yeah. 1045 out of Kingston. Something like that. Yep. Two, uh, was it two? 239 into New York, I think the schedule time is. And Oof. then we leave at like 320. Oof. 320 out of New York. And I get to Metro Park. Uh, 
at like three forty nine or something like that in the morning. <laughs> According to the schedule. Oh, before you go. <laughs> so before you go, approach medium and medium approach are two different things. Yes, or, they are. Or is it approach medium and medium approach? They're two different things. Okay. They mean two completely different things. Um, Jarrell says one last thing. What are the odds that Mike calls out the signals while on board once he leaves Penn Station? Not very likely because he's not in the front. He can't see the signals. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'll know. Uh, I'll generally know when we pass him because I'm familiar with the territory. We're not gonna call him out. Yeah, I mean, he'd he'd have to be up there with the engineer. He ain't gonna call shit. Ah, oh, there goes an inbound MBTA. Probably bound for the yard. I don't know if you heard that. But anyway. Yeah, everything will be fine. Um, we got some snow coming down. But uh, I'll take Mike safely to uh, Kingston, and he'll be on 67 on his way back to New Jersey. So I hope you guys enjoyed uh, tonight's stream. This is an especially long one, kind of a impromptu one. Uh, wasn't expecting Mike to come on up here and nonetheless want to do a, a stream with me, uh, which was phenomenal. So I really hope you guys enjoyed. Please leave your comments down below. If you got any questions, anything, just just reach out. Throw anything down in the comments. We we love uh, your feedback. So yeah, thanks that's for it. Uh, yeah, thanks for joining us. And uh, until next time, we'll see you. Awesome. All right, take care, guys.